Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell, who honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. I love this one. I absolutely love this one from the Redneck Joke Book. A question. What has 80 legs? And three teeth. What has 80 legs and three teeth? <laughs> the answer, the front row of a Billy Ray Cyrus concert. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. He's up at the ranch. Here comes Kate Smith, and God bless America. Good morning, good morning. Thank you, Kate Smith, and God bless America. And good morning, everybody. I'm Zeb Bell, Zeb at the Ranch, with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, and then also some of our great advertisers, including Lee's Furniture Floors and more at 459 Overland and Burley, and our friends at Western Waste Services, always at your disposal. Get on the route service today. Uh, call them. Kelly and the crew, 734-6969. I love that story, that joke. What? <laughs> the front row. <laughs> Good morning, Gina. How are you? I am doing well. How are you? Oh, I'm just uh, kind of making and exercising my sixth sense of humor. <laughs> Sometimes we need I love it. Now and again. I love redneck jokes. I got a whole oh, book full friend. of redneck jokes. Well, well I like, uh, who's a Jeff Foxworthy? Oh, yeah, I love those too. And I, I had another one here. Here's, here's one that I really thought was kind of cute, okay? Uh, real quick, did you hear about the blind redneck and his seeing eye dog? The blind redneck uh -huh. and his seeing eye dog, they go into a store. And all of a sudden, the blind redneck reaches down and grabs the dog by the tail and picks him up over his head and starts swinging him in a big circle. And the clerk that's working in the store looks at him and says, Hey, 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 can I get you anything? And the man that's the blind redneck says, No, thanks, I'm just looking around. <laughs> <laughs> I told you they were sick. <laughs> oh, well. Okay. Letters, we'll get letters. We'll get lots and lots of letters. Yes, uh, who cares? Anyway, I'm never going to be politically correct. I'll talk about that in a little bit. But anyhow, uh, do we have a pledger? We have, um, well, it either can be Michael or me or you. I tell you what, you, and that'll break it up, and then we'll go to Michael. So go ahead, please. Okay. All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. She does a great job. Thank you, Gina. And right now it's time for the weather, brought to you by Cheney Flooring and Home Design, 1228 Oakley Avenue in Brody. Look for their blue door. I mean, all the hardwood, laminates, vinyl sheeting, natural stone, oakley stone, carpet cabinets, all the countertops, everything they guarantee they can meet or beat any price on flooring. Free in-house consultation with Kyle and Whitney Cheney. And call them, 678-6945. You better believe the best. Cheney Flooring and Home Design, 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley. Here's Michael Rogers' weather. Six years I've been doing the weather with Zeb Durant. It's the anniversary when I called up Zeb and I said, hey, you should like do your weather. And he said, sure. We've been doing it ever since. Morning, everybody. Sunny, high 92 again today. It's sunny and hot all the week long. And you're going to be in the low 90s all the way across the board. No thunderstorms in the forecast. Everything looks good. You still got some juice out there. And you also got some dry weather. So please, even though the red flag warning is not 
in effect. It is drying the magic volume of South Central Idaho. Please be careful with your cigarette butts. You know exactly who I'm talking about. And anything else that deals with fires, dry or do is throw it on the ground, you got to set wildfires. Just that simple. Enjoy the weather, Phil. What do you got? There you go, the best weatherman in the world, Michael Rogers Weather.com. Brought to you by Cheney Flooring and Home Design, 1228 Oakley Avenue in Berlin. Look for the blue door. Okay, good morning, everybody. Calls are welcome at 436-2244-1866-927-4587. And uh, we welcome your calls. Hey, by the way, I know somebody else that's going to stand at the door and welcome you, and that's all the folks over at Valleywide Home and Ranch, 910 South Oneida and Rupert. All the 4 Hers, listen to me for a moment. Fair time around the corner. Some fairs have already started. You better get into Valleywide Home and Ranch. They've got all your 4-H supplies feed needs and you can get a percentage off 10% off and believe me they got the clothing they've got all the uh, ropes and the haulers and the brushes and everything you better get in there all the dog and kitty cat food everything for you for fair time at Valley Wide Home and Ranch 910 South Oneida in Rupert you stop in and see them today all right, let's take a look here real quick. I remember the other day that I was telling you about this uh, website, and they are running some ads on television right now, tellepa.com. Please, I urge you, write it down, Tell epa.com. Get online and tell them how absolutely destructive and how absolutely senseless their policies are to shut down power plants and their idiocy of control is going to break this country and uh, just do everything you can to let the EPA know that you are completely dissatisfied with their assuming power to regulate and control you and me and this country of America. Once again, tell EPA.com. Get on there and tell, tell them. Tell them what you think, okay? Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley, 6780459. Uh, it's going to be warm again. Now it's going to be on the increase. We're going to be seeing temperatures high 90s in the next couple of days, and your air conditioner is probably going to go chug a lug, chug a lug, chug a lug, chug a lug. We're trying, but they need a new air filter in your air conditioning unit. Well, if it's clean, then it's going to work efficiently. If it's not, you may have trouble. So get on in there today and check out a new air filter for your air conditioning unit at Ramsey Heating and Electric, 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley, where they always provide warm winters and cool summers. Really, really good, folks. Uh, did you hear about the vet that got locked up in a VA facility for the night? Locked up. I'll tell you about that in just a minute. Right now, caller, good morning. You're on the air. Yeah, uh, some days that I was, uh, you know, sometimes when I would go to pee. Uh, Randy. Hello, Randy. We lost you. There was a distinct click, and all of a sudden your phone went into the outer limits, and we've had that happen a lot on this program, unfortunately. Call back. I don't know what happened. Is he there? I'm not off. I am now. There we go. Uh, you know something? My temper is not... I'm not doing well with my German temper and these cutoffs on the air. My goodness sakes. I, I apologize to the audience, but the radio station and myself, we have no control. I don't know where it is in the phone company. I don't know why. It's not the phone. It's not the phone company. We had a major power bump here at the studio. All of the stations went off. Well, I don't care. It's other days we haven't had power bumps. And so, therefore, I'm just still going to say I'm not happy with this kind of a situation. We did have a major power bump. That's fine. But that doesn't excuse the fact on the other days that we have not had power bumps. Uh, Carl, are you there, Randy? 
Yeah, evidently he didn't make it back in. Uh, so anyway, call us back, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Denny's Restaurant, 611 Overland in Burley. My goodness, what a great place to go eat. I'll be right with you, call or stand by. I tell you what, we were in there the other day for breakfast, and oh, the food was phenomenal. you got to try those pancake poppers with the cream cheese on the side. Oh, they are heavenly. You're going to love them. And uh, seniors, they got special discounts for you, and you're just going to absolutely love the menu, breakfast, lunch, or dinner. All of this and more at Denny's Restaurant, 611 Overland and Burley. And our next Lunch Bunch coming up on Thursday the 31st. Don't you miss it at Denny's Restaurant. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Hello, caller. I'm waiting for you. Are you there? Please. Well, evidently, they're not there. Um, okay, now you are. Good. Good morning. You're on the air. Go ahead. <laughs> I give up. I give up. Uh, caller, try back, if you would, please, because I have no idea what's going on with our system here this morning. And while I'm waiting again for someone to call in, go ahead and give us a jingle, and I'll tell you a little bit about Barry Equipment and Rental with all the Doosan equipment. Oh, my goodness, the large excavators get the job done for you. Great financing on these great big boys that are toys that can work hard for you. Super people to work with and world-class quality. All of this with the Doosan loaders, etc. at Berry Equipment and Rental. Addison Avenue, West in Twin Falls, South Lincoln and Jerome, and 159 West Highway 30 in Burley. Nick and the rest of the crew over there in Burley always appreciating you to stop in for purchasing or rentals. They're there to help you. Got all the Bobcat equipment. They've got everything at Berry Equipment and Rental serving you. We have um, had some problems with some of the calls. Let's see if we can get this one on. Good morning, caller. You're on the air, I hope. Uh, I'm here. I hope, too. Okay. No, uh, there are times I get very frustrated, and whether it's the phone company or whether it is a power bump, I still get a little bit more than upset because it's a almost everyday occurrence, and so that's why my temper is a little short. Good morning, you're on the air. What can I do for you? I was listening to the radio this morning early when I got up, and they were talking about the uh, mass corona ejections. And primarily the Carrington event that happened back in 1889, and also the EMP in the event of a nuclear attack, which would disable all of our uh, infrastructure, our phones, our power grids, our water systems, all that. See, I think I am going to get me a car with points in a cover here. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the world is a crazy, crazy place right now, and some of the things that are being done and said and constructed within this Obama administration, especially the protectionism over in Israel, I should say, over in that area for Hamas, a terrorist group, uh, this administration seems to be favoring them more than they are our number one ally, Israel. This is a mess. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. As you know, the, but really, what choice does Israel have at, at this point in this crisis other than to go in and, you know, kick butt, take names, so to speak? You know, they tried talking. That didn't work. They tried intermediation. That didn't work. But this is about the only option that they have left is to go in and, you know, uh, you know, I've always said my whole life that Israel is uh, kind of the poster child for how all countries should be. They honor their past, they honor their present, and they honor and try to preserve their future. And no one, no country, no one should stand in their way or will they let them. And that's the way we used to be here in this country. Yeah, we used to years and years ago. Uh, one thing about Israel that uh, some people that have gone there have told me about it is it's the most polite people in the world, they say. Mm -hmm. 
No, I agree with you, but uh, I also think that your comments this morning in the earlier part of our conversation are very fitting. Thank you so much for your call. Sorry we had a little Thank difficulty you. getting me on. We appreciate that. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank All right, you. sir. Bye -bye. Snyder Surplus. Oh, my goodness. We were over there for the grand opening, as we've stated, and they are the nicest people, Leland and Tammy, everybody. I certainly appreciate them. It's not just a military surplus store anymore. They have everything for your enjoyment. And they've got a brand new store after that horrendous fire. And they've got new merchandise. They've got friendly service just like they always did. And they're open from 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, 9 to 1 on Saturdays. Don't forget, located at 112 South, 200 West of Rupert, it is Snyder Surplus serving you. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Yes, good morning, Zach. I'm <laughs> glad I hear you. <laughs> I'm uh, glad to be heard. You know, the U.S. is under attack from several different uh, sources, and so many people just don't understand that. And uh, we've got the Soviet Union is behind part of this problem we're having at the border. Then we've got the drug cartels. Then we've got the Muslim terrorists entering through our borders and the existing terrorist training camps in the U.S. The Mexican government itself is part of the problem and we've also got MS-13 coming across the border. You know, the only solution for Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, what you just touched on there, I saw kind of a uh, old documentary on MS, uh, what do they call it, MS-13 gangs, and uh, some of these kids that are 15, 16, and 17 that are coming across the border, and we cannot deport them. We can't do anything to them if they're under 18 years of age. And uh, some of the horrendous crimes that some of these gang members have committed murders and rapes and knifings and uh, it's just horrendous what they've done and uh, many of them were under 18 some were even 14 and 15 committing these crimes yep well there's one solution I don't know how you feel about this but I think right now the US military ought to take over the government before it's too late and put Barack Obama in prison for the damage he's doing to this country. Well, I applaud what Rick Perry is doing in Texas, even though he's taking a lot of uh, blindside hits from the Democrats and they're really throwing some mud at him and everything. But I really applaud him for putting the Texas National Guard on the border. Uh, I don't care if it's 1,000. I don't care if it's 10,000. At least he's trying to do something to curb this massive illegal alien immigration into this country. Do the American people realize what's coming down for them, especially the younger generation? It doesn't matter to people like at my age, because they're not going to be around that long. They're not going to like living under socialism and communism. Tony, I don't honestly think that they understand or care. I think we have such a blasé, uh, kind of a head up in the air with their eyes wide open but can't see anything attitude. I don't think they really understand how serious this is. You're absolutely right there, that they don't understand and don't care. And uh, when you don't understand something that's being taken away from you and it's being eroded, uh, and all of a sudden it is gone someday, they're not going to miss it because they never were aware or conscious of the fact as to how good it was before they lost it. Yeah, I'm afraid that's, that's another case that we're facing. All right. Well, listen, my dear friend. God bless you and Mary. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know, we've been talking about Sophie's Shatterbox at 530 East Street on the square over in Rupert. Oh, my goodness. Wedding cakes, cookie bars, homemade bread, cinnamon rolls. And she has been delivering cinnamon rolls to some of our great clients on this program. And you talk about thank me. Oh, my goodness. You don't have to thank me. Thank her. Sophie's Shatterbox. They are delicious, and you can't have a better place to go in and enjoy a meal from 6 in the morning to 6 p.m. in the evening, Monday through Friday. It is fantastic. What nice people at 530 East Street in Rupert. Sophie Shatterbox, you stop in and see them today. All right, give us a call, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. A veteran gets locked in a VA facility for the night. He got locked in a VA facility for the entire night. And he was there to refill a prescription of pills that he needed. 
And he was told to go sit out in this office. And so he did. And when his time was uh, to be uh, discussed with the druggist, they would call him. Okay, so he goes out and he sits down. And he waits, and he waits, and he waits some more. And then pretty soon he starts getting a little nervous looking at his wristwatch and everything. And uh, he notices nobody else is there. Nobody else has come into the room. And so he gets on his cell phone and he calls 911. And he says, um, I'm at this VA facility to refill my prescriptions and nobody is here. They all went home. And so he starts moving around. Around and and trying to find somebody, and he sets off the alarms in the VA facility. Holy smokes! They had all kinds of people showing up to get him out of there then. But the poor guy gets locked in a VA facility waiting for a prescription refill. That's not going to help the VA, and it's not going to help the image at all. Calls are welcome. Four three six two two four four one eight six six nine two seven four. Five eight seven. I can't believe this stuff. You can't make it up. I'm telling you. Hey, listen, sugar beet growers, don't forget. Can I have your attention? Introducing Preaxor from BASF, the newest form of chemistry for sugar beets to fight disease and potentially increase yield and sugar content of your sugar beets. Preaxor contains headline and a new compound, Xenium. And that also provides excellent control of powdery mildew. Like I said, with the application of BASF's Preaxor, 45 to 60 days prior to harvest, you have the potential of higher yields and more sugar content in your sugar beets. Contact your local ag chem supplier today. And for more info, call BASF Ron Ellis, 431-6776, or Tim Perry at 844-0682. BASF's Preaxor for your better sugar Sugar beets. Yes, check on that today. All right, calls are welcome. 436-2244-1866-927-4587. There is a major, major movement right now by a small group of people, and uh, they are trying to be the PC police and uh, stop you or anyone else from dressing up and pretending to be an Indian in this country. Now what's happening is this, and if they had their druthers, they would stop even little children from playing cowboys and Indians. But uh, there's a group of people, and they're headed up by a woman by the name of Jacqueline Keeler. And she wants more control, and she's campaigning against any Indian names that are used in sports or used for logos. And she is coming down on the Washington Redskins, the Cleveland Indians, the Atlanta Braves, the Chicago Blackhawks, Kansas City Chiefs, and it is going to get nasty. And I tell you what we're going to do. Uh, I want to ask you this one question this morning. Uh, are you at all upset? Or do you think it's racist? Or do you think any negative thoughts whatsoever when you see and or watch a game or listen to a game involving those teams I just mentioned, the Braves in Atlanta, Chicago Blackhawks, or perhaps the uh, Cleveland Indians, whatever the case might be. Are you offended by that? And do you think it is racist? I'd like to know. I've got a whole bunch of questions for you right after we take this break. But first and foremost, here's the Capitol Press Ag Minute. We'll be right back. Today's Ag Minute brought to you by the Capital Press, the West Ag Weekly. Soybeans and canola may soon become common crops in southern Idaho rotations to supply an oilseed crushing plant scheduled to open this fall in Plymouth, Utah, located about 10 miles south of the state's border with Idaho. Washakie Renewable Energy started building the plant last fall on the site of its Plymouth biodiesel plant seeking to cut costs by crushing its own oil seed rather than continuing to buy finished oil from other suppliers. Washakie recently doubled the plant's biodiesel capacity to 20 million gallons per year. The company will need to purchase up to 1,300 tons of soybeans alone each day, in addition to canola and significant quantities of used vegetable oil. This is Hannah Browse. 
For more agriculture news and information, turn to the West Ag Weekly, the Capital Press, and CapitalPress.com. Okay, thank you very much, Capital Press. And don't forget that the Lincoln County Fair and Rodeo is in full swing. Midweek, Wednesday, July 23rd, today. My goodness, the 4-H and FFA Sheep Show started about 30 minutes ago. And uh, tonight, they're going to have the big horse pulling match. Yep, kind of relive the old days with the horse pulling going on. Tomorrow night on Thursday night, the Junior Rodeo, and then on Friday and Saturday night, IMPRA Rodeo, and Sunday, they're on Sunday too, Antique Tractor Pro. All of this and more at your Lincoln County Fair and Rodeo in Shoshone. Wonderful, wonderful people. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. I would like to know if any of these people in that group are Native American. Oh, yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. They claim to be. And, uh, you know, here's the deal. This Jacqueline Keeler is founder of this group called Eradicating Offensive Native Mascotry. Now, that's the title that uh, was in USA Today. And uh, they're going after anybody that goes to a game, like uh, at Kansas City or Atlanta, whatever, and dressing up as Indians, uh, wearing headdresses, wearing any war paint or having any of the tomahawks they're going after anybody because they say it's offensive and racist you know um, it's a bunch of baloney as far as I'm concerned and uh, I I've been, been involved in the wolf issue a lot and you always hear about the Native Americans and the wolf having a spiritual connection to them. Right, right. And uh, I've gone right up to them, Native Americans at sports shows and things like that, uh, where we had booths and stuff, and I've asked them, uh, is the wolf a spiritual thing to the Native Americans? And the answer is no. Yeah. They had to kill wolves to protect themselves for hides, for camps, for clothing, for shoes, everything. Right. Um, you know, all this crap that comes out is more of small groups trying to run whatever we're doing. Yeah, well, let me just throw one more thing at you now. Caller number two, I'll be right there, don't go away, is um, you use the term Native American. Were you born in this country, Jack? I sure was. Um, okay. Why aren't you called a Native American? <clears throat> well, I've, I've, I've asked that question, too. Um, you know, I was born and raised here, and... Uh, all my life here. I get a little upset when I have the terminology Native American uh, applied to the Indians in this country because they're no more native than I am and uh, I'm, I'm starting to get really razor thin in my patience as to how some groups want to say well they have an exclusivity to a name they have an exclusivity to wearing something in the name of political correctness I'm not going to stand for it Yes, and that's a bunch of bones. All right, Jack. People right, Jack. think that. I, I agree with you. Thank you for your call, as always. Thank you, my dear friend. Thank, Thank you. you. Caller number two, you're on the air. Go ahead. They hung up. Oh, well, they got to have a little patience. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, call back. You know, and the interesting thing about this article in USA Today yesterday, on the front page of the sports section, it says, Taking a Stand Against Red Face. Now, what was interesting in the article, and if you get a chance to pick it up and read it, when they named the different sports teams, whether it was Cleveland, whether it was Washington, whether it was Chicago, etc., they, in the later part of the article, and it went for uh, the front page on to page number two, they refused to say like Atlanta Braves. They refused to say Washington Redskins. They said Washington's team or Cleveland's team or back to Washington again they referred to them as Washington NFL team they are trying to create what they think is political correctness and it's a very small group 
that wants a political correct society that they can control. They have a far-reaching effect of who and what they deem offensive. Now, okay, let's just say tomorrow that all of a sudden the Washington Redskins and Daniel Snyder, the owner, are forced and coerced into changing the name, okay? You know as well as I'm sitting here that it's going to be a domino effect. They're going to go after the Kansas City Chiefs. They're going to go after the Cleveland Indians. They're going to go after the Atlanta Braves. They will go after the Chicago Blackhawks. But you know, I'm going to bring this up again because it's, it bears watching. In none of this story that was a huge story, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven columns in the USA Today, never once was Florida State University mentioned as a uh, arbitrary concept against Indians, possibly. The Florida State University Seminoles. And the reason that they didn't touch it, I think, is because the Seminole Indian tribe down in Florida receives a huge amount of money by being the logo and the sponsoring entity of the Florida State University football, basketball, etc. teams. They're making a ton of bucks on all the sales of all the merchandise, all the souvenirs and everything. And it really was weird that that was not even mentioned in this article, but they went after after every other team. And this group, this group headed up by this woman named Jacqueline Keeler, they even want to make it against the law that if you dress up as an Indian and wear a headdress or war paint or maybe tint your face a little bit to a reddish tint, you can be arrested. What are your thoughts on this? Please give me a call, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Please give me a call. Well, I'm waiting for your call that I know is probably on the way and coming in. Don't forget, to our friends at Redder Showcase. My goodness, they've been busy over at Redder Showcase. 2611 Overland and Burley. And they're having their annual tent sale. Well, you're saying to yourself, well, now, wait a minute. If they're at 2611 Overland and Burling, all we have to do is look for the tent. Well, wait a minute. The tents are inside. Yeah, they said because of the warm temperatures and they want to keep you cool while you're shopping that they're going to put the tents inside the store where it's nice and cool and all the savings in the store are going to just save you a ton of money. That's right. They're having a huge mattress sale, many closeouts. Holy cow. Well, you can't afford to pass this up, and you can save a lot of money on Whirlpool, Maytag, and Amanda Appliances. And don't forget, 12 months, same as cash on approved credit. Wow. You'd better stop in today to Redder's Showcase. 2611 Overland and Burley, their big tent sale, annual tent sale, inside, where it's cooler. All right, give me a call. 436-2244-1866-927-4587. I have been to the Milwaukee Braves before they moved to Atlanta games many, many times. I have been to the Atlanta Braves games down in Atlanta. I have seen the Tomahawk Chop. I have seen Cleveland Indians with their logo chief, Wahoo. And now they want to pass a law that if you go to a Cleveland Indian game, you cannot dress up as Chief Wahoo for the fear that you might upset somebody else sitting in the stands. Now, it's okay to watch Chief Wahoo uh, when they hit a home run, etc., dressed up uh, on part of the team's basis, but you, as a fan, can't wear the clothing. No war paint, no headdresses. They're going to have a dress code at San Francisco Stadium. They're going to do everything they can to eliminate those mascots and those logos, and they're going to start with the fans. And this crazy group has also got it on their agenda that they're going to go after the uniforms of teams. Now, on the Milwaukee Braves, for instance, there across the front of the chest is a tomahawk. And then, of course, it says Atlanta. And on some of their uniforms, Braves. They're going to try to stop that. And uh, I've never seen such a full court press as it is right now for total political correctness on athletic teams. And please, if you get a chance, read this article 
that's in USA Today from yesterday because it's absolutely scary what they're going to try to do and how they're going to try to make it politically correct against you as a fan to even dress up uh, and support your team. Absolutely ridiculous. Calls are welcome, 436-224-1866-927-4587. Remember when we were kids? I remember this vividly. You know, they get together and you play Cowboys and Indians, and they want to make that now so that that's a denigration against what they say Native American uh, attributes, Native American heritage, etc. Now we're, we're being such a PC society, we have to clean everything up? <sighs> Good morning, you're on the air. Good morning, Seb. You know, this is really ridiculous. I don't know about you, but because I grew up in Minnesota, and our high school team had an Indian name as sponsor, and there are many Minnesota teams and probably some in Wisconsin. So what's, what about these high schools who can't afford to get all new uniforms and new equipment with their logos on? Adrian, Adrian, let me just tell you this, and this is a true story. You can look this up on the website, okay? My high school in Fort Atkinson, Wisconsin, when I was a freshman and sophomore, was known as the Fort Atkinson Cardinals. And all of the student body got together after my sophomore year, and we voted to honor the Indian tribe in that area, the Blackhawks, and we became the Fort Atkinson Black Blackhawks. And quite frankly, it changed the whole demeanor and personality of the school. We were a perennial loser in football, basketball, and everything. And honestly, it instilled a new school spirit by changing the name and going to Blackhawks in honor of that Indian tribe. And we became state champions in a lot of different athletic contests. Well, and the same thing applies to the high school that I went to and many others around the Twin Cities area, all of the state of Minnesota, because we had a lot of Indian reservations, a lot of Indian things there. Yeah. And it's just the cost, you know, they just barely can afford all those things as it is. If they have to replace and redo all that, and our history goes back about 100 years in our high school, so this is ridiculous. How do you regulate... How do you legislate fans that want to go to a game, and let's say they go to an Atlanta Braves game, and they've got the souvenirs on sale, like the tomahawks, etc., or the uniforms, or the caps, or anything else? How are you going to start to legislate and regulate that so that they have to sit there in plain T-shirts or shirts and not say anything, not do anything, they can't chant anything? Is that what being a fan is all about? Well, it's just what America is becoming under this this government we have now. I agree. Thank you so much for your Thank call. You. I appreciate that. Thank you. You know, look at some of the various fans. Look at, uh, for the Washington Redskins, they got the hogs, you know, and they sit there and they're all dressed up and everything, and they're really uh, trying to spark their team to go on to victory. And look at in Kansas City, my goodness, they pay tribute uh, to the American Indians, and everything is done first class. Look at the Atlanta Braves, baseball team. Everything is done first class. And now these people are trying to minimize it, take it away, and make it a crime to support the teams, support the logos, support by wearing the uniforms or the t-shirts or whatever. This is completely asinine. Your calls are welcome. 436-224-1866-927-4587. And there's another aspect of the story that I'm not buying. I'm not buying into this. That uh, supposedly uh, the Washington Redskins, they have a marching band. And uh, I understand that uh, they appear in many, many parades along the East Coast. And boy, they dress up in uh, American Indian garb, and they really do a wonderful job. Well, supposedly a woman by the name of, and i got to find it here real quick, bear with me, uh, Jacqueline Pata, P-A-T-A. She said, oh, I saw the band as it was marching in a parade, and I thought, this is terrible. It's a violation, and tears streamed down my face as they were imitating and mimicking Indians. Oh, give me a break, please. 
We've got to have a weather forecast here real quick, and it's brought to you this hour by Burley Glass, 1029 Overland Avenue in Burley. Burley Glass with Gentle Ben, Leslie, the whole crew. Get a free bid on windows today. Energy efficient windows that can increase the energy efficiency of your home two to three times. Always serving you with the very best. Burley Glass, 1029 Overland in Burley, 6781459. And now here is Michael Rogers' weather. Hey everyone, Michael Rogers with Zeta the Ranch. Another day of sunny and hot. In fact, another week of sunny and hot. It's going to be pretty dry in the Magic Valley. 93 for the high today, 60 for the overnight low. Enjoy the day, enjoy the weather. It's the only weather you got. Whoa, that was short and sweet, very succinct. Thank you, Michael. Brought to you by Burley Glass, 1029 Overland in Burley, 678-1459. Give us a call, 436-2244. What about you, caller? How do you feel? How are these younger people supposed to know what an Indian is if we don't depict what they was dressed in and and show them what an Indian was? Because there's no Indian movies anymore, and and the schools have dumbed down the the everything about us. So what they did that band that you was talking about, I feel like that was that was great. To yeah. show the public what an Indian, how they dress, and and everything else. So I was. If there's anything wrong with that? I was watching an interview with one of these people that uh, wants all this political correctness, and this was about back in March. And this person was on a talk show, one of those uh, television talk shows, and the lady said that she even wanted to go as far. Now listen to this one. Caller number two, stand by. But this lady and her group wanted to go as far as to eliminating even rebroadcasts of the Lone Ranger and Tonto because they thought that was demeaning. Okay. Well, I... And then, see, that's what... They're going by what the media and what the people in Hollywood want them to think of them. Yeah. And there, there's nothing like that. I mean, it's, it's nothing like what it used to be. You know, when I look... I, I don't know, it's... It's not, it's not getting any better, Jeff, and I don't know how we can change it. I agree with you. Thank you so much for your call. Thank I appreciate you. it. God bless you. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. No, oh, they're backing up again. There they go. They hung up. Uh, you know, give me a little patience over there, callers, please. Got to make sure everybody gets a fair shot. Uh, the one thing that really bothers me is uh, where do you draw the line? You get a lady on a talk show and she says, well, we've got to stop seeing all of these reruns from the past. Why, it's demeaning to see Tonto and the Lone Ranger. That's how far-fetched these people are. Good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Zeb. Who's going to be next on this thing? The Rednecks? Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, possibly. <laughs> you know, uh, what is a redneck anyway? I mean, it's just a, a figure of speech, but are they going to, are some of these people going to start complaining that they're being called rednecks and they're really not? And uh, it's just, it's just, Somebody, they have too much time on their hands. Well, let me ask you, have you ever been to a Major League Baseball game with the Atlanta Braves or the Cleveland Indians? Have you ever been to an NFL game featuring the Washington Redskins or the Kansas City Chiefs? Well, I have, and I have never seen anything demeaning. I have never seen anything done that would lessen the stature of Indians anywhere in this country. As a matter of fact, I think it's an honor, an honor for them to be a part of the logo and the festivities. Well, I, I think a logo is just a logo, and it represents a team. It doesn't really represent the uh, 
the Indian nation as a whole. It's just a name. Well, and Keith, you brought up an excellent point just a minute ago. You said, where does it end? You know, that's a very good question. Are you going to have the bird lovers of the Audubon Society be offended by team names like the Baltimore Ravens or the Arizona Cardinals? I mean, the list goes on and on. How do you stop people from being offended? I don't know, but you know, like I, I enjoy watching that show, that dynasty. Those guys are true rednecks, they say. Yeah. And they dress up in a real nice suit and everything, and you know, long hair and beard and stuff like that. That's just something they want to do, and you can either accept it as it is. Let it go. There you go. There you go. Keith, always appreciate your call. I got some more waiting. Thank you. God bless you. Have a good day. Thank you much. Thank good you. Back. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. So, Deb, this is the, the craziest thought of all, but but this woman is crazy. So, if she's so so incensed by all of this reference to Indians, is she living on her own little plot of land and chewing her own hides and and skinning her own buffaloes and living in a in a teepee is 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 she living living this culture that she thinks that we are denigrating by by calling teams this this name i I bet not i'll bet that that i'll bet that she wears western clothes you know western style not not in as in the, the wild west but you know um and i'll bet she drives a car and lives in an apartment she lives the same lifestyle we do. So why is she so incensed by this? Well, let me ask you... What? Let me... Somehow the rest of the world is are denigrating her personally. What's the problem? I don't know, but you got to keep in mind it's not just her. Now it's turned into numbers with a group. But let's turn the tables here a little bit, okay? Uh, the Dallas Cowboys. Let's talk about the Dallas Cowboys for a moment. They represent with their logo, the Cowboys... Uh, and the name, supposedly a major part of Western American history, the American cowboy. So are they going to get upset? Are certain segments of being in the Western world going to get upset if people imitate a cowboy and dress up with shaps, boot, six guns, a vest, and, a, and everything else? Are people going to get upset and say, we're going to have to sue you because you're not a real cowboy? Isn't that kind of the same thing? I don't know a cowboy that's that, that thin-skinned. Yeah, but it's the same thing, isn't it? It is exactly the same thing. Well, you know, maybe here in Idaho, if we could get all cranky about somebody calling their team the Spuds or some crazy thing, you know. Maybe California would be all upset if there was a team called the Persimmons. Well, yeah, but you know, you're bringing up that, a really good... That is offensive to somebody. You're bringing up a really good point there, because, and I'm going to get Gina on the line here in a minute, because she is a graduate of the University of Idaho, Vandals. I think Vandals is a nice name, a good name, and a respected name, a powerful name. But there are some that are offended by the name Vandals because they associate it with vandalize and uh, criminal activity and everything else. That that's how far-fetched and crazy this thing is getting. So what are we supposed to do? Call them the one team, the two team, the three team, the four team? Well, then, you know, eventually we're going to get to, I don't want to be number 13. Yeah. I want to be number one. Or we, we're going to just call them the white team, the black team. Oh, can't call them white and black. Well, then what are, what are we going to do? I don't want to be the purple. I want to be the green. Yeah, I, I agree with There's you. There's nothing, nothing that they can, can use to please everyone. So some of us just need to just chill. Absolutely. Thank you for your call as always. I appreciate it. God bless you. Have a good day. Thank you. You know, Gina, really, uh, if you're there by your microphone, respond on that because the name Vandals, uh, there's so many terminologies that could be used in the uh, word Vandal or addition to the word Vandal. I mean, where, uh -huh. how high is up on this issue? You know I'm right on this when I say they can take the word Vandal, they could add Vandal Vandalize, they could do anything. They've already tried. I know. See, they that's the point. Yeah. So, you know, it's a, 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 but that's part of the school pride is you've been vandalized. Or, yeah. or you know, you know it, it's, it's pride. It's pride in your team. It's pride in your teammates. You know, it's, it's pride in your school or, 
you know, if it's, it's a, if it's a major league team, then, you know, it's just all about pride and ownership of that pride. That's all it is. What is the difference, and there is none in my opinion, as to having the Idaho Vandals, very highly respected logo, mascot, etc., uh -huh. than the, let's say, Oakland Raiders? See, the Raiders have been, uh, I think, uh, wrongly accused of being the colors for gang members, etc. But the Oakland Raiders football team, upon its inception in the AFC, the American Football Conference, absolutely one of the best football teams when it started, and in the 70s and 80s, one of the biggest powerhouses. And there's yeah. nothing wrong with their logo showing kind of the pirate patch and the football helmet. But they, many people say, it's culturally insensitive. But where do you draw the line? How can being a, a being a pirate be culturally insensitive? That's my <laughs> point, Gina. But you know I these crazies, once you let them take away the Atlanta Braves or the Kansas City Chiefs or the Washington Redskins, Ooh. I dare you to yeah, draw I, I dare you to tell me where the line is in the sand as to where they won't stop next. Oh, they, they won't stop. That's right. They won't. You know that. So, I mean, that's really a rhetorical question. Yep. They're not going to stop. That's the whole point. And that w is the reason I'm bringing this up this morning is because you've got to put our own line in the sand and say, no, we are celebrating and honoring our team and our logo, and we will not change it for you that say we are culturally insensitive and not politically correct. It will stay as it is. Agreed. Okay. Hey, don't forget your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations, and free peace of mind tire protection, free lifetime tire and mileage care. Don't forget all the tires, all the tires for your driving needs, uh, pickups, SUVs, cars, horse trailers, boat trailers, you name it, it's all there. Along with easy credit plans available to make sure you can get the best of tires for your safe driving. Brake service, extraordinary, absolutely. Absolutely the greatest. A long way of front end alignment, shocks and struts, batteries, all of this and more. With Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, John on Pauline and Twin, and Randy on Overland and Burley, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Caller, I've got exactly 30 seconds. Real fast, please go ahead. Yeah, maybe we ought to call Burley the Burley Mushrooms, huh? <laughs> uh, would that, would that uh, satisfy people, do you think? Well, yeah, there's somebody out there that might be a bobcat outdoor lover, and they're offended by that term. You're right on, Carl. God bless you, man. Talk to you later. Thanks. i got to run to the news. News next, ABC. I'll be back in six. Welcome back, hour number two, Zeb at the Ranch. I'm Zeb Bell with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you. And also some of our great friends and advertisers, including Lee's Furniture Floors and More at 459 over in the Burley, and our friends at Western Way Services. From the canyons of the Snake River and the Lacrosse. By the way, don't forget they've got all the dumpsters. I keep telling you that if you're going to be cleaning out your garage, oh, man, that's a project, and you're going to be throwing away a lot of stuff or maybe get down in the basement and say, it's all got to go. They've got the dumpsters in various sizes. All you have to do is call them, and they'll help you. 734-6969. And don't forget, too, to get on the road service, and they'll come get your garbage once a week. It's gone. It's out of there. Western Way Services, always at your disposal. Call 734 Six nine six nine. Also, want to remind you on Thursdays tomorrow at nine twelve in the morning, right here on Zebit Ranch, we have a program called Gardening for Idiots, named after me and my gardening skills. And getting better though, Vicky's Country Garden is the sponsor, and the lovely Miss Vicky and her business is located at one eighty five South, six hundred West of Paul. Number to call for all your gardening and your landscaping material needs is four three eight five six six three. Stop in to Vicky's Country Gardens. Oh, right now. 
also, I want to remind you about Joel Hewitt. Good morning, Joel. Good morning to your staff. A family place had some mortuary at 710 6th Street in Rupert. Number to remember and write down, 436-5636. Once again, 436-5636. Very flexible hours, and they are there when you need them. With family attention. That's right. And always the highest ethical standards with unquestioned integrity of serving you in a very, very trying time. So please call them today, 436-5636. Handsome Mortuary at 710 6th Street in Rupert with our dear friend, Joel Heward. Uh, you know, last night, i got to tell you, we went down and uh, we were watching with Brad Perkins and uh, uh, Tanner Stanger uh, has some bulldog and steers down there. And uh, Tanner's a big boy. Tanner is probably what now six three six four weighs about uh, well over two hundred, and one of those steers uh, has turned into a rather large farm animal. And when he went to bulldog the steer, the next thing we know, Tanner's almost getting thrown out of the arena. Holy smokes! Good morning, with Tanner. Hope you're feeling okay. Woo! Hey, we're gonna go to Colorado right now and talk to my good buddy Doug Johnson. Doug, good morning. How are you, my friend? Good morning, Zeb. I'm doing well. How about yourself? Not too bad, uh, but boy, there is so much in the news, and I know you've been writing about it. I've been writing about it on my blog. Uh, Doug Johnson has the Horse Sense blog and the author of many books. But, Doug, this mess, uh, and I don't think it's getting enough news coverage on any of the networks. I know it is on Fox. I know it is to some degree on CNN, more on the cable than it is on the networks, but this mess over in uh, the line of demarcation, Hamas and Palestine and, of course, Jerusalem and Israel, it's a mess. I think you're putting it politely. Um, you know, here we have a government that is the only true free society or country in the Middle East, and that is Israel. They are our true ally, one of our closest allies. And they simply want the right to defend their position, to defend their right to exist. They're surrounded by 100, 100 million um, uh, Muslims who have vowed to destroy them. Hamas themselves in their charter you know, have vowed the destruction of Israel. And the media, the left, uh, and sadly even some people on the so-called right, it's really the establishment right, are against them. And they cry out because Israel, in defending itself, kills a soldier or two. And maybe there's a, there's a, a very, very, very small number of civilians uh, who have, have been killed. That's the nature of war. And yet 2,000 rockets have been fired into Israel, and nobody bats an eye at that. Yeah. It, it is absolutely outrageous. I said on a show I'm on every week in Houston uh, this morning, I said to the host that Bibi Netanyahu, the prime minister of Israel, is more American and has more concern for America's best interest than our own president does. Uh, this is a man of great integrity and honor. We should be supporting him and his country. They're not perfect, but boy, they're an awful good country and they're good people, and, and it's crazy that we're not supporting them. You know, uh, Doug, I'm really glad that you mentioned in the uh, start of your dissertation about Hamas and their charter. I have with me uh, right now a copy of their charter and much of what they say and what their goals are in the total destruction and, quite frankly, genocide of uh, j people of Jewish faith and uh, upbringing. And one of the sentences in their charter says, O oh, Abdullah, there is a Jew behind me. Come and kill him. And yet our administration and Secretary of State John Kerry and Obama are leaning towards a possible peace settlement in that area that favors Hamas, a terrorist killing machine over our ally Israel. You've got to help me understand how they could be this stupid. Well, it's, it's yeah, it, you know, it, it, the anti-Israel, the anti-Semitic hatred, and it's spreading throughout Europe and, and even in America now. The, uh, there are anti-Israel protests. The, the levels of anti-Semitism are growing. We are facing another potential uh, possibility of, a, of something like a Holocaust we saw in Nazi Germany all over again, although we are seeing that against Christians, and at least a separate topic. But uh, the... 
people in the Arab world are raised to believe that Jews are evil, that they use the blood of Arabs in their matzah. I mean, it's just, it's unbelievable. They, they promote and preach the protocols of the elders of Zion, which is uh, nothing but progressive trash. Uh, that's even taught in the schools to little children, this stuff. Even in Bethlehem, the birthplace of Jesus Christ, and uh, so, you know, the, the stuff that goes on, part of the problem is uh, that the people in the Middle East, the average uh, citizen, not the government, but the citizen, really does not know the truth. They've never been exposed to it. They don't, they don't, most of them don't believe in the Holocaust because they don't even know it existed. They have no knowledge of it. And uh, between that and uh, the uh, uh, Islamic ties into uh, uh, things like Nazism, uh, people don't realize it. I mean, you and I could go on for a couple hours on this, but uh, it's very scary that this is going on, and it's all because people don't know, they don't understand. Uh, I've always said, when you get to know people and you find out uh, on a personal level what people are like, it changes your opinion uh, and your stereotypes of people when you start to know them. I have been blessed in my life as I've lived around the country, country to have many close Jewish friends. Uh, I've had Jewish families where I was the one Gentile invited to all their family seders and their uh, various uh, holiday celebrations. Uh, and I, and I, I'm very flattered by that because it's a wonderful time with wonderful people, a wonderful culture. And um, so I, I've seen Judaism from a different side than probably a lot of people have. But what gets me the most is here you have a nation that their entire history is based on peace. And, and all they are is attacked and they're, they're blamed for attacks. When you hear news from the Middle East that you'll hear something like, you know, Israeli soldiers kill, you know, three people from such and such a, 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 an attack. What you don't hear is it was a response to hundreds of rockets being shot into Israel and they're responding to it. And, and you never hear the first part of the story. The media is so corrupt. Uh, in fact, a friend of mine uh, who's on Twitter uh, calls uh, the mainstream media the hashtag corrupt media. And I think that's a good description because we don't get the truth, and this is a perfect example of it. Well, and I agree with you totally. I think everything you said I would just say ditto to this morning. But when I picked up this article that was sent to me by a friend of mine, quite frankly, that works for the Daily Caller back on the East Coast, Jamie Weinstein, uh, I've had Jamie, as a matter of fact, on our program, and it was uh, nine things you need to know about Hamas straight from its charter. It's, it's it's, it's very scary. It's bone chilling as to Hamas's charter and how they just basically want to kill. Kill! That's their main. Yep. Like I was saying just a moment ago before I was cut off again this morning, here we go. Doug Johnson's on the phone with us long distance from Colorado, and we were talking about Hamas. Was Doug, hung up. oh boy, we'll get Doug back on the line momentarily, hopefully. And uh, these kind of things just drive me nuts. Anyway, I want to take a moment before we get Doug back on the phone line and uh, explain to you again Cheney Flooring and Home Design, 1228 Oakley Avenue. In Burley, look for their blue door and call them at 678-6945. Where your home design needs are aisles apart, not miles apart. They can meet or beat any price on flooring, and they will give you free in-house consultation. Kyle and Whitney Cheney, they really care. Please get a hold of them today, and don't forget for all your hardwood, laminates, vinyl sheeting, uh, all the natural stone, oakley stone, all the countertops, everything at Cheney Flooring and Home Design, 1228. Oakley Avenue in Burley. Look for the blue door. Let's check and see if Doug is uh, re re established and ready to go. Doug, I'm sorry. We've been having more problems than you can believe of being cut off on our program, and I apologize. Nothing in our control. So once again, please take my apology. Well, that's okay. I just figured you probably 
wanted to go to break, and so uh, I suddenly heard a tone, and it went dead, so I knew something was wrong. No, I, I, what he's talking about is Hamas, and uh, uh, what? Uh, how in the world this government, how in the world Obama, John Kerry, etc., uh, off-mic responses are being caught sometimes on microphones that are live, especially with John Kerry, and also Vice President Joe Biden, and the response from this administration in particular to be so calloused against Israel, our biggest ally. I just don't understand this stupidity. I, I agree, and and well, it's ignorant. You know, it's stupidity based on ignorance, and and stupidity and and um, and hatred are often based on ignorance, and that's what we have. Uh, Closed-minded people who will not hear the truth. Uh, a, led by um, uh, an administration, and specifically by Barack Obama, who clearly has um, uh, Arab leanings. Uh, I think his upbringing uh, with heavy, heavy communist influence and uh, Muslim influence, I think, causes him to have uh, preference for uh, anybody other than Israel. We know he has uh, been caught off guard, uh, um, uh, saying negative things about both Benjamin Netanyahu Yahoo and Israel. So unfortunately, it's not a surprise, but it's very sad. And what scares me, Zeb, is that we see many Americans falling in the trap. Brian Williams on the illustrious NBC uh, was uh, throwing in Benjamin Netanyahu's face. I have this second hand, but I'm told he was throwing in an interview with ben Benjamin Netanyahu in his face quotes from some murdering Hamas leader terrorists because that's all they are and to me it's just offensive they would even even give them a voice uh but they do and and they look at the israelis as the evil ones and and it, it amazes me there is no recognition of history there is no recognition of facts there is no recognition of the fact that israel exists as a country miraculously and also as a result of uh the un and the world working together after world war ii to give them land back and uh, yet they claim these Palestinian people have all these rights, and yet technically there really, are, there really is no such thing as a Palestinian. And I, I mean, I can go on and on on this, but, but overall it is outrageous to me that we see what's going on. And uh, frankly, I think the American people should be standing up in protest of our own government. When the FAA yesterday cut off flights to Tel Aviv because a rocket landed near there, now that's supposed to be a temporary uh, cut off, but that does huge damage to Israel. Israel is, a, is generally a very safe place. Very few of these rockets are actually landing because of their Iron Dome protection. But um, I believe there are ulterior motives to cut off those flights and to make sure that Europe does too, because that will hit right at the lifeblood of Israel and hurt them. Yeah. And so I think that we, we don't just see ignorance and stupidity, we see evil intent towards Israel in our own government. Doug, I want to shift gears and get back over to this country, our great nation, and our neighbor to the South, Mexico. I, I think I know as much or more about the border situation than anybody else. I've studied it. I've been there. I've talked to people down there. I've talked to Border Patrol agents in that area. I've talked to many, many people that live in that area. I have friends in that area. I do not understand why this problem is exacerbated the way it is. It could be stopped and shut down as of 3 p.m. this afternoon, but it's not being shut down. It's still being allowed to grow like a cancer and fester at the expense of the American taxpayer. And do you think I'm wrong? No, not at all. And in, in fact, we and we know that a very small percentage of the 400, or actually 4.3 billion is raised now that Obama has asked for. He keeps increasing. He started asking for 2 billion, then 3.7 billion. Now it's up to 4.3 billion. He's asking for for the border, and yet only about 400 million would actually be spent for the border the rest has he has other plans for under the guise of being uh border security and border issues and Im immigration issues but um no I, i'm not surprised at all because of the fact that um we know for a fact that this president's entire plan is the breakdown of america and part of that is using the howard and piven strategy which was published years ago, and that whole concept that progresses is overload the system, the, the financial system of America so much that our economy collapses, and then they can come in and say, see, capitalism doesn't work, and we're replacing this, and then they can bring in their Marxist communist system under the label of socialism and make people think it'll be better when it really won't. So 
th- this should be a, um, actually this should be a, a warning call to Americans uh, because uh, last weekend there were I believe it was 319 cities had protests about this illegal immigration issue. That should be saying a lot. We should be spending our time at our representative's office hammering away on them to make it clear to them this this cannot be allowed. Unfortunately, I'm afraid that we're going to see amnesty whether we like it or not. Well, your last sentence really scares me, though, Doug. Unfortunately, we're going to see amnesty whether we like it or not. In what form and to what degree are we going to keep taking these kids in en masse, literally thousands of them, up to and over 100,000, and then multiply that by two to possibly four times with family members that are allowed to come in? I mean, where is the breaking point? Well, I <laughs> Yeah, that's a loaded question. And, you know, let, let's first realize that the majority of the people coming in, we hear about the kids, and we hear um, downplayed numbers of how many kids are coming in. The lieutenant governor of Texas just said yesterday or the day before in an interview that 80 to 85 percent of the illegals coming in are not unaccompanied kids; they're adults. We also have have found that 65 to 80% of these people coming in are being given amnesty uh, under the guise that they're, they're fleeing persecution in their home countries, which is nonsense. They may have you know, a lousy life in their home country, but they, they're, they're not all under persecution, but this is the guise they're using. Mm-hmm. And then as they bring them in, they move them around the country, plant them in other cities, other places around the country. These people are here to stay. Uh, I mean, even those who are given a hearing, they're saying the average is something like 584 days that they have to wait before even getting a hearing as to whether or not they can stay. But they are saying that 65 to 80 percent are being granted or will be granted amnesty automatically. So we can consider these people are here to stay, and the only way to stop this is to get this border shut down. I give kudos to Governor Rick Perry of Texas, who's sending his National Guard down to the border, whether the feds like it or not. Good for him. But he needs help, and he needs support, and because uh, they're under assault. And uh, uh, we need to do everything and anything we can to support these people. Yeah, and I was going to say, in addition to Rick Perry, and I've got a call into Jan Bruce office in Arizona, Governor Jan Brewer. I would love to see Jan Brewer, of all people, of all governors, that has had run-ins with Obama in the past over a lackadaisical border enforcement, I would love her to do the same thing. And I think then, with not only Rick Perry in Texas, but also possibly Arizona's Jan Brewer, that would be the fly in the milk that would get the Americans' attention that they need. I would hope so. I have great disappointment in Jan Brewer. She's shown herself on a number of issues, a number of bills, not to stand strong as a conservative in, 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 the, in her term. And so I fear uh, whether she'll stand strong like she needs to. But all we can do is encourage her and offer her support and, and hope the citizens of Arizona do the same. Because um, she, of the border states, she's the other state we have hope for. Maybe New Mexico, but New Mexico doesn't seem to be talking about a problem. Um, and there's probably a lot of reasons behind that. We know there's not going to be support out of Jerry Brown in California. So it's going to be Rick Perry, and I think you're right. I think it's, you know, Arizona is the other state that's going to have to stand. And uh, hopefully they will. And the American people have to stand behind them because uh, they're under assault. And uh, a lot of people don't understand and don't realize the importance of these states. Texas is under such severe assault that um, a lady I know, uh, named Regina Thompson, is president of the Colorado uh, Tea Party Patriots, Patriots, and she now is spending time going going to Texas, and I've gotten around some radio shows down there too, speaking to Texans about the uh, the fact that um, the Dem- Democrats are working hard to turn Texas blue, and how they're doing it, and she's explained to them how they did it in Colorado, and part of that especially in Texas, is the use of these immigrants. The more they can bring in and they can get them into the voter rolls, you know, they don't care if they're legal or not. Uh, the Democrats don't. Uh, the more they can do this. And if Texas goes blue, I promise you, Zeb, it will be generations before there's even a chance 
that a Republican could hold the White House again. It will be over for the Republicans in America if Texas goes blue. This is really a critical time for us. Oh, I couldn't agree more. That was very well stated. Absolutely agree with you. Uh, the Republican Party, the GOP, is a thing of the past in the trash can if Texas does go as a Democratic liberal state. I find it hard to believe that they would allow that to happen, Doug. Look at the people, look at the personality of don't mess with Texas type attitude. I don't know. How close is it possibly to being switched over to a blue Democratic state? Well, I have family in Texas. My sister's been down there over 30 years, and uh, for many years, she, she and I are very close, and she has put pressure on me to relocate to Texas. And my wife was born in Texas, even though she moved away when she was five years old. If you ask her, she'll still say she's a Texan. Once it's in their blood, they never <laughs> change. And my wife has talked about the desire to live in Texas. And my sister recently came to us and said, as much as we would love you to live here, and, and, and we really wish you would move down here, we have to warn you, Texas is very close to turning blue. It is not the state people think it is. It's not what it used to be. There are a lot of conservatives, but the, the left is pouring people in there as fast as they can from all over the country. They're working hard to turn it blue, and it, they are having a lot of success down there. So they are fighting for their lives down there. And um, uh, I guess the only the other side is we could all move to Texas and support uh, the, the conservatives down there. But, but they're in a real fight. It's not as... Uh, uh, as uh, solid conservative as people may think. And uh, so she warned me, she said, you know, you need to consider that if you think about relocation. And uh, that, along with what we're seeing with these border issues, um, has made us, as we think about whether or not we would relocate, has made us really have second thoughts about Texas. And so, uh, you know, that's my personal observation and, and, and uh, information I can give you on that. All right, Doug, I'm going to ask you a favor, and if you can't do it, I'll understand. I'm going to do a commercial break. I'm going to hold you over for a few minutes this morning, if possible, because there's one other topic I'd like to discuss for about five minutes. Can you give me five extra minutes or not? Yeah, actually, I'm free for another half hour, so no problem at all. All right, stand by. I'll be right with you. I want to remind everybody about the Lincoln County Fair. Don't forget, this is a real fair that you can have a lot of fun at like they used to 50 and 100 years ago. They understand what it's all like, uh, what to be in a rural setting. They have a great time at the Lincoln County Fair and Rodeo. Today, of course, they're going to have a big horse pulling match at 6 p.m. tonight. Tomorrow, they're going to have their big parade at 5 p.m. and the Junior Rodeo at 7 p.m. And then on Friday and Saturday, their IMPRA Rodeo. Sunday, an antique tractor pull. All the exhibits, all the nice people up at Shoshone at the Lincoln County Fair and Rodeo for 2014. You get up there and enjoy a country fair the way it was designed to be, okay? At the Lincoln County Fair. All right, don't forget too, let's ride Highway 24 between Rupert and Burley. Oh my goodness, they're open Monday through Saturday from 9 to 6. They're summer hours and they've got all the 2015 models coming in right now. The dirt bikes, the Can-Ams, side-by-sides, rebates on some of the 2014 models. All their generators are on sale. Hey, they got a great buy on generators for all your camping needs. You better stop over and the best of accessories and the best of a service department. All serving you at Let's Ride. Highway 24 between Rupert and Burley, where the fun is sold. We're on the line with a dear friend of mine, Doug Johnson from Colorado, and the reason I wanted to hold him over is I wanted to ask him about a story that was very chilling, very scary, and it's going to, I think, be a telltale story as to what happens worldwide. ISIS over in Iraq has issued a statement to all Christians in Iraq, and they've given Christians three alternatives. Number one, leave the area now. Number two, if you don't leave, you are going to pay an extreme tax to stay there and live there. And number three, if you don't leave or you don't pay the extreme tax, they are going to kill you for being a Christian. Doug, this is the beginning of Armageddon and Revelations as we've read about. These people are insane. All they are is killers, and they're going after people of Christian faith. Well, absolutely, and you know, most people aren't aware because we Christians have had a pretty safe life in America for a long, well, ever since the founding of our country. 
and you're now we're under assault and attack not about not the kind of level that we, they are in other parts of the world but um, um, I expect to see those attacks increase and I expect to see persecution increase far beyond what we even imagine and what we're seeing in the Middle East is not uncommon in many countries in the world uh, you know North Korea um, China places like this uh, they, Christians are um, the most persecuted religion in the world, uh, by far, and people don't realize that. And what we're seeing in the Middle East is an absolute holocaust against Christians, uh, and, and I don't use that word lightly. It is absolutely a holocaust no different than what you saw against the Jews in Nazi Germany. And um, we have an obligation, if, if we have any brains, we, we would see this as Americans, but those of us who are Christians have an obligation to support our brothers and sisters uh, of the same faith, um, and, and really any people who are being attacked or under assault. But this gets really close to home for me as a Christian. I know for you too, Zeb, and uh, it's a tragic thing. These people are suffering unbelievable uh, uh, deaths and torture and uh, threats. And in fact, I read recently that um, at the uh, close of the war, uh, of our part of the war, um, in, in Iraq, there were 1.4 million Christians there. Uh, today, that number is down to less than 400,000. Mm -hmm. So uh, now many of those people have fled the country, but nonetheless, the attack on Christianity in the Middle East is is really strong. And uh, you hit it on the head. You know, you mentioned Armageddon. We, we uh, are seeing prophecy fulfilled. This is part of it. Uh, in, at the end of time, we will see Christians persecuted. I've told you personally, privately, that I believe in America, contrary to what people say, that true Christians, people who truly are Christians, probably number 10 to 12 million, maybe 15 million at the top, out of 317 million Americans, 270 million of which profess to be Christian. I believe only 10 to 15 million of those are truly Christian, uh, because Jesus made it clear that there will be very few who make it into heaven, because very few who call themselves Christians truly are. And so that being said, I think what you're going to see is the persecution gets greater, not just in the Middle East, but across the world and even in America. You will see more and more people abandon the label of Christian, and uh, the persecution will grow. But uh, uh, the, the, when we see this happening around the world, our reaction should be, that could be here, we need to help stop this. And so while I'm not a fan of sending our troops back into uh, Iraq or anywhere else, I also see no difference in the Middle East to what we saw in Nazi Germany. And if we couldn't turn a blind eye to, to Nazi Germany, why should we be turning a blind eye to these people in the Middle East? Yeah, real quick, Doug, short answer on this, because I'm, I'm out of time on the overage that we had this morning. But uh, from Boise, Idaho, we have a pastor by the name of Pastor Abedini that is held in an Iranian jail. Uh, and right now, because of only the reason he being a Christian pastor that was trying to help with orphanages, in that area. I don't care if it's Iraq. I don't care if it's Syria. I don't care if it's Iran. Right now, being a Christian is very dangerous, and this man might never see the light of day back with his family again. Yeah, I'm familiar with the case, and I um, actually, because of you, I was aware that, uh, that he is from uh, Idaho, and I think it's a tragic situation. But it's, it's amazing how whenever it comes to the well-being or welfare of a Christian, that this administration seems to turn a blind eye to it. They, they will maybe throw out a few words and say they're trying to do something, but they really don't work out. You know, this young man down in Mexico who's in prison, yes. this Marine, yes. he's a Christian, and our administration really is doing nothing. We see this uh, every time this happens. Uh, so we're not only seeing the world turn against Christians, we are seeing that we have an administration that won't fight for them. Doug, I couldn't have said it better. Thank you so much. I want to say compliments to you for an excellent job writing the Horse Sense blog. By the way, how is the new book? Give it a plug quickly. Uh, it's doing well. It's called The Leadership Secret, and um, it's, uh, it's done pretty well. Uh, I think people are uh, finding it interesting to look at what really it takes to be a true leader, what we need to look for in the character traits of the people we put in leadership positions. And so uh, that's gotten some attention, and it's, uh, it's, it's doing fairly well. So thank you for asking. Doug, I'm sorry I, uh, without giving you four notice uh, about staying on the air longer, but I appreciate your patience. Thank you for being on the program this morning. 
Happy to do it, Zeb. I always enjoy talking to you. You have a great week. All right. Thank you very much, Doug Johnson in Colorado. Thank you very much. Hey, let's not forget our friends at Lee's Furniture Floors and More. All the Simmons mattresses, and they've got all the floor coverings and all the furniture. I mean, what are you waiting for? Just get on in to 459 Overland and Burley and celebrate, celebrate the kind of a modernization and re-comforting of your home with brand new furniture or maybe brand new carpeting or whatever you're looking for, they can help you. All the lamps and accessories, they've got it all at Lee's Furniture, Floors and More. And a staff of people that absolutely know everything about anything that's in Lee's Furniture, Floors and More. They really can help you. So stop in today at Lee's Furniture, Floors and More, 459 Overland and Burley. And by the way, they want to say thank you for voting them the number one furniture store in the Minicash area. You better believe it. Lease furniture, floors, and more. Uh, by the way, too, I want to say thank you very much to our friends at Cameron Siemens Insurance. And uh, Dean and Todd, with all your life insurance needs, health insurance needs, retirement planning, employee benefits, all of this and more as they serve you. Very accessible, very devoted to taking care of your needs. Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. Now write this number down and give them a call. Very important, 436-4424. That number again, 436-4424. The best. Cameron and Siemens Insurance serving you. We are going to go to the phone line right now, and the lovely Gina, I believe, uh, has got Mr. Leon Reed on the phone. Let's check and see if Gina's got him called. Is he ready and available? I am. Ah, good morning, Leon. How are you, Leon Reed? My old buddy, good to talk to you again. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what, what, what goes with you there? What's that, Leon? I say, what goes with you there? Well, I'm. Uh, I was handed a piece of paper the other day by a gentleman that stopped by my house, and his name was Leon Reed, and he wanted to talk to everybody about a wounded warrior's benefit shoot that's going on this weekend. Uh, tell us a little bit about it, Leon. We, uh, the Seven Idaho Mother Loaders Association, is sponsoring the shoot for wounded warriors. Uh, it's our, our monthly club shoot. We shoot uh, black powder, muzzle loading rifles and pistols, throw knife and tomahawk, build a fire, flint and see all that stuff that would be of the fur trade era. Uh -huh. We are a family oriented club, uh, stress safety. Uh, to the utmost, if you show up with signs of alcohol or drugs on you, you don't shoot. Uh, if you want to have an alcoholic beverage, you do it after you've done it put away. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we stress safety. This will be up at the uh, Jerome uh, Rod and Gun Club range up Highway 93 there on the, on the east side of the road. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard to tell what you'll shoot at from the man putting it on. We've got all sorts of metal targets which will be shot at. If you have a black powder rifle, come and join us. Uh, even if it's a, an inline, we threat. <clears throat> excuse me. We suggest and, and stay with the, in our own club with the traditional side lock, either percussion or flint lock, rifles and pistols, single shot. But under this circumstance, if you want to come and shoot with your your inline, fine, do it. Okay. We just out there to try to generate some. Uh, Revenue for this Idaho N Heroes uh, Outdoors Association. Uh, if you don't know anything about them, they take wounded warriors on trips in Idaho in the outdoors. Uh, they're all volunteer. They serve uh, the people. They, they use their own vehicles, uh, four-wheelers, snowmobiles, uh, horses and mules, pickups and so forth to transport the wounded warriors. Uh, from the point of picking them up, and, and they also take them back to, you know, to make sure they get back home. Mm -hmm. So uh, we would like to, you know, have everybody come and play. The only thing we would ask is if you shoot an in line and back off on the powder charge so you don't make holes in our target. <laughs> and, you know, we shoot past round ball. We highly recommend that. So we, would, we would appreciate that. All right. Now, Leon... It will be this Saturday morning. Uh, hopefully, we'll get started to, to shoot about 9 o'clock. We're supposed to have 
saw two or three wounded warriors there. Uh-huh. And if you're a wounded warrior, come and join us. We, if you ain't got a gun, don't worry about it. Okay. Uh, there'll be some there to shoot. All right. We shoot everything um, like a traditional side lock. We have one man who at times shoots a brown vest, which is the standard British and American arm of the Revolution, 1776. It's a 75 caliber. Oh, my. He gets 10 round balls to the pound where he molds his own, and you got an ounce plus, an uh, ounce and a half, two-thirds of lead coming at you. you. It makes you wonder about it. Okay. <laughs> now, Leon, let me ask you. Are these guys uh, wrong? Just, a, just a second. Hold, 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 hold. hold on a second, Leon. i got a question here. Uh, what about uh, any prizes? Are there prizes to the winners? That, that I, I I don't know that we discussed that. I mean, it did primary a, a a revenue generating. Okay. You'll have recognition and so forth. And as a rule, in our club shoots, we do uh, first place only. My wife says she's secretary. She's okay. Kept notes on all this. First place rising only. Uh, now what that'll be right offhand, I don't know. All right, now you're suggesting. I mean, if you want to join the club and shoot it with us every month, we have what we call a blanket prize. Okay. You bring in a prize, uh, you know, something as a rule. If you can make it yourself, um, that it has to do with the era. Okay. Uh, valued at five bucks, and then the first place shooter takes his pick of what's on the blanket. The second place shooter's next, and right on down the line. All right, now Leon. And we also have kids shooting, and like I say, we throw tomahawk and knife and so forth. The kids are the ones you don't want to try to beat throwing a tomahawk and knife. Okay. Now, now too much now, time to practice after school and so forth. We are out working, earning a living. So. All right, now let me jump in here. Let me jump in for a second, Leon. Uh, just a minute. Uh, let me jump in. If they need more information on Idaho and Heroes Outdoors Incorporated, how can people find out more information on how to support this great charitable organization? Well, I have a brochure here that I picked up. Uh, there's a man by the name of Derek Benson. The brochure says he's vice president. I took a donation to him this spring, and he said he's president this year. He's in Kimberly. Okay. At, uh, 208-490-0324. Okay. All right. Now, you're going to be using muzzle loaders. What is the big popularity and fascination with these old, old guns from back in the fur trading area? Uh, how come they're so important today, and how come so many groups like yours, the Southern Idaho muzzle loaders, why are they so popular and so many people want to own one? They're, they're a whole different world in terms of shooting. You can take your 22 long rifle and go out and, and an hour or so burn up a hundred rounds with ease in an hour unless you're real good at it you're going to burn 20 it, it, it's a whole different world and we're all open fight um, we do allow uh, movable fights some clubs don't you have to have totally primitives or you move them with a hammer and with a file to suggest your elevation with a file and your windage with a hammer mm-hmm. uh, you know and, and each club can have his own uh, we don't stress the real primitive dress we like in kind uh, some clubs uh, nationwide stress buckskin and i've been too cheap and too tight to turn loose the money to buy a pair of buckskin <laughs> i'll just put it plain okay uh, but by the same token we're we're out there to try to keep alive the fur trade fur trade era as well as the uh history of that you know we have a man who goes to school and uh does demonstrations and talks on that in fact at our rendezvous memorial weekend we were down in billingsley creek state park we had a fourth grade class if I remember right from a private school there in Gooding came for you know for a demonstration and so forth and all those kids got to build a fire with flint and steel got to throw the tomahawk and knife shoot a bow and arrow and they brought their sack lunch and we we uh, had Dutch oven cobbler for them for dessert mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so you know I mean we tried to be family oriented and so forth 
All right. Now, that's going to be on this Saturday, July 26th, starting time at 9 o'clock at the Jerome Gun Club. Uh, just uh, look for mile post 64 on Highway 7593, and there will be signs, I'm sure, along the side of the road, and it's all going to benefit the Idaho and Heroes Outdoors. Uh, Leon Reed, an old friend of mine, thank you for being on the program this morning. We really appreciate it. You're surely welcome. You surprised me. Thank you, Ned. All right. God bless you, man. Thanks so much. I've known that gentleman for a long, long time. And as a matter of fact, when I first moved here over 43 years ago, Leon and his lovely wife and his family, they used to, when I had the morning program at another radio station, Ian Twin, they used to come in and occasionally bring in donuts and coffee and everything as I did the morning show. Really, really nice people. But this is going to be a nice, fun event to help honor and pay tribute and proceeds going to the Idaho and Heroes Outdoors Incorporated. It's going to be this coming Saturday, July 26th at 9 a.m. at the Jerome Gun Club. Everybody be there. It's sponsored by the Southern Idaho Muzzle Loaders Association. Got a new weather update, and the weather this hour is brought to you by, holy smokes, i got to take a look, Sportsman's Warehouse, 1940 Bridgeview Boulevard in Twin Falls with our buddy Reese Widmeyer. Oh, my God goodness, everything. The great indoors for those who love the great outdoors. They've got it all for you. All your hunting and fishing and archery and camping and boating and ATV accessories, clothing, it's all there at Sportsman's Warehouse. Tell you more in a minute, but right now, here's Michael Rogers with the weather. Hey everyone, Michael Rogers with Zeta the Ranch. Another day of sunny and hot. In fact, another week of sunny and hot. It's going to be pretty dry in the Magic Valley. 93 for the high today, 60 for the overnight low. Enjoy the day, enjoy the weather. It's the only weather you got. There you go. Thank you, Michael Rogers, weather.com. Quality gear giving you the edge to perform well and enjoy the journey outside. That's why Sportsman's Warehouse carries only top quality products for the serious outdoor enthusiast at 1940 Bridgeview Boulevard in Twin Falls. 737-9900. You stop in and see our friends at Sportsman's Warehouse. Oh, calls are welcome and appreciated at 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Love to have you give us a call, please, if you would, uh, about any subject that we've talked about so far this morning, and we'll kind of hash over some more in the time remaining for this hour. But I want to give credit where credit is due. And uh, yesterday afternoon, I did not have a chance to visit with this man, but he did return my call and I want to say thank you to Ron Black with the CSI Refugee Center. He did call back and his message basically in a nutshell was quote unquote that uh, CSI's Refugee Center not any plans to bring in any of the uh, border children, the illegal alien uh, children from uh, South America to this area. So we'll stay on top of this issue and let you know exactly what's happening or not happening. But I just want to say thanks to Ron Black for giving us a call, leaving a message for us from the CSI Refugee Center. No, they are not planning on bringing in any of the... Uh, children from South America to this area. Okay? That's what we found out. Calls are welcome and appreciated. 436-2244-1866-927-4587. like to hear what your comments are. And uh, coming up, as a matter of fact, let me take a look here real quick. The, today's the 23rd. On July 26th, the Day of the American Cowboy. Anybody out there wearing a pair of boots and a hat and a big belt buckle? The United States Senate has declared July 26th the Day of the American Cowboy. And this is the ninth year the resolution has been introduced and serves to honor the accomplishments and contribution of cowboys across the nation. So congratulations. Uh, Gina, are you right there by your microphone for a few moments? What are you doing over there this morning? Mm, uh, fixing technical issues with uh, other computers. Oh, you're having a problem with a glitch? Uh, it, ca it, happen it happens when you have a massive power bump and all of the stations go off the air. You know, what, you what do you do? Reset all of the computers. And then we've got, K-Bar Studio alone has one, two, three... 
three computers. Hot 100 Studio has three computers. Cat Country has three computers. Uh, KFTA has three computers. Then we've got our four streaming computers. And then, uh, yeah, we've got a lot of computers. Let me ask you a question now. I'm a little bit more than familiar with the problem because you have to reset everything. And yes. a lot of the music, a lot of the verbiage, everything that happens on various stations is computer generated and uh, relies on that computer to get everything on time and on the air. And if there is a power bump or something like that, it can be a disaster. Oh, it's a massive disaster. It knocks off this, that. It knocks off uh, our computers that communicate between Rupert and Jerome. Uh, it knocks off our email online computer. I mean, it just it, it completely shut us down. One little five-second power bump is devastating here to the, to the radio stations, and it takes about an hour or more to get everything up and reset again. Well, you know, let me ask you this question, though. I mean, in this age of technocracy, are there safeguards that uh, protect it? Or if you get that power bump, you might as well sit back in the chair and go, good grief, here we go again. Um, the, we do have some safeguards. You can get yourself, uh, they're called uh, backup power packs. Yeah. Uh, that can actually run the computer for a, an extra half hour. But not all of our computers are set up on that backup power pack. We've got uh, just our main on-air computers. Everything else, no. Okay, now, one final thought on this, though. Uh, power bumps, now, I'm not saying there's more or fewer during the summertime, but I think during the summertime months, they seem to be more pronounced than at any other time, and I think a lot of that has to do with the irrigation systems, etc., right or wrong? No, 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 it has nothing to do with the irrigation systems. It has everything to do with thunderstorms and solar flares. Aha, uh -huh. okay. So the minute you get a report of a possibility of a thunderstorm, you start to cringe in the back yes. room. Yes. Well, when the thunder, usually I can see the thunderstorm rolling in because it usually it always happens when I'm at home. And so then I'm the first one here to the studio because uh, well, I'll be listening. And as soon as that thunder bumper hits and we lose power, I know that we've lost power here at the studio. And so that means that I have to come in. Do the Rupert Police and the Minidoka County Sheriffs give you a pass for driving on two wheels around corners to get to the station? <laughs> Sometimes. 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 How many traffic tickets have you got? Honestly, come on, be Honestly. forthright on this. Okay, uh, uh, hmm. The since I've moved down here or just in general, you know, over the span of Well, trying to get the station on the air. I've never gotten a speeding ticket while coming to work, no. Really? Never. Okay, I've folks. One speed, I've, I've gotten one speeding ticket, and that was when I was working at KMVT, and I was actually going to work. And uh, so my last speeding ticket was in, I think, 2009, late 2009. I would have given $1,000 to be a little portable tape recorder in the back seat of your car to hear the verbiage <laughs> that came forth from you when you saw the flashing red and blue lights in the back oh, mirror when you got oh, picked yeah. up on the way to work. It's like, ah, oh, fudge. <laughs> not really what I said. But, uh, you know, I just, you know, hand them over all my stuff. Do you know why I pulled you over? Yes, I was speeding. Go ahead and give me the ticket because I'm late for work now. <laughs> well, you know, do you know why I pulled you over? Yes, sir, because your vehicle wouldn't have gone another three miles trying to catch this boot. I tell you that. I'm, I'm on the way. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well just pull over because I know it's coming. There you go. Hey, thanks, Gene. Appreciate it. Hope everything goes better for you over there. Oh, All right. Hey, don't forget the Chadwick Sports Grill. Mm -mm. Let's check the menu today, and they're going to have a special. Now, this is a new one. This is a new one. They're going to have a Greek salad with hummus, and it's a pita and chicken and soup for just nine ninety five. It's going to be delicious at the Chadwick Sports Grill, 139 West Main in Burley. You stop in. They always have an interesting special, always a delicious menu with nice people at the Chadwick Sports Grill, 139 West Main in Burley. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Yes, uh, hey, uh, I don't know, if Gina is listening, maybe she could comment too. You know, where you have these disruptions, this morning it even cut me off while I was on the phone talking to you about that dam, which I never finished, but it doesn't yeah. matter now. But um, do you think that the, you know, your, your digital online with your, with your program, but your phone line is a separate thing. Mm -hmm. But it, it just gets 
it seems so funny that you're always being cut off like it didn't used to happen at all ever now it happens all the time and you get the feeling that there's you know sinister activities going on is that a possibility oh yeah there are little green men that have floated down from outer space and they have infiltrated the magic valley and they live in the barrel pits in those little gutters those little circular irrigation deals and they come out at certain times during the morning and they laugh and they jump around a little campfire and then they cut the cords and they put me off the air that's about the excuse that I could use for the many many times that we've gone off the air lately and I'm trying to be facetious about it well it's a, it's a tool that if you're living if yeah. I buy a tool and it's no longer it doesn't function the way it was told that I was told that it would then I have a right to return it or expect something better now I, I just it, like I said it never used to happen at all now it happens all the time as your program grows uh, and, and the effectiveness of the program grows uh, and then you're being cut off all the time. And even this morning, I was cut off. Actually, what it is is president. Like, is there any possibility that people are hacking you somehow? Oh, there again, absolutely, Randy. What it is on the desk of the president of the United States on his desk, he has a toggle switch, and it's Mark Zeb, and he pushes that at least once a day. I got to run to the news. God bless you, Randy. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. We're going to take about a six-minute break, and then we're going to have Dr. Adrian Arp in our studio. We're going to talk everything from Agenda 21 to all these stupid foreign trade policies, which have run amok. We've got a lot of things to cover this morning, so stay tuned. We'll be right back in six minutes. Oh, welcome back. Hour number three, Zeb at the Ranch. I'm Zeb Bell. Good morning. And our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you, along with our friends at Lee's Furniture Floors and more at 459 Overland and Burley. And Western Way Services, always at your disposal. Get on the route service today. Call Kelly and the crew, 734-6969. Have a gentleman with me in the studio that has been a good friend of ours for a long, long time and has been spot on with his prognostications as to what's happening around the world, especially with our government. Good morning, Adrian. Arp, how are you? Good morning, Zab. Good, glad, good to be here. It's uh, very, very nice to have you on the program. And, uh, you know, there's so many things that we could discuss this morning, so many things that are newsworthy, so many things that you're concerned about. Uh, one of the big things that you wanted to talk about this morning was our these trade agreements, okay. not, not only the history, but the disastrous uh, upcoming trade agreements that are being negotiated. Uh, I asked a, a group that I presented uh, a short presentation just a week ago, our Kiwanis group, and uh, asked them if they'd ever heard about the Trans-Pacific Partnership or the, the trade agreement with the EU. Mm -hmm. These would be NAFTA on steroids, literally. What about this uh, agreement, the Export-Import Bank? You know, I have talked about this on the radio, and there is a situation to where there's a lot of senators that have stepped forward and congressmen that have said, wait a minute, wait a minute, this Export-Import Bank, uh, we're on the hook for all the money. The American taxpayer is on the hook for all the money. If the loan defaults and the people go south, the American taxpayer has got to pay for Everything is to the advantage of the borrower, and it hurts us. Well, that's the way all of these things are set up. You know, let's just go back and review real briefly about NAFTA. Okay, that passed uh, 21 years ago yeah, now, yeah. 1993. And before NAFTA passed, this agreement was supposed to help create jobs. It was going to help our economy. It was going to be all these things. It was going to be like, sli uh, you know, sliced bread. But... What in reality happened after NAFTA was passed? Well, let's put it. Let's, let me back up even further than that. 1962, we had no trade imbalance in the world. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? Our, it zeroed out. Mm -hmm. We didn't have any of these trade agreements. Okay, so NAFTA comes along. And there were other uh, uh, treaties and so were passed before that, but NAFTA was a big one. And 
our, our trade balance with Canada was a, a negative 10 billion. With we had a positive trade balance with Mexico about a billion. So altogether, let's say nine billion. That was underneath the, the Kennedy administration. Well, yeah, I mean everything yeah. prior to the prior to NAFTA. Yeah. Okay, since NAFTA. Annually, our trade deficit runs about $150 billion between Canada and Mexico. Mm -hmm. You know, and so we've lost uh, probably over a million jobs, uh, minimum, just with NAFTA. We've also um, shipped overseas or f shuttered up 40,000 factories. So, this 40,000 40, factories. Wow. Yeah. In America. In America. Yeah. That that are have gone overseas because of taxes and regulations and litigation. You know, you 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 see those three things. You were talking this morning about the litigation just over logo on, on yeah. teams and so yeah. forth. Yeah. I mean, you, you just look at the no, amount of litigation. So let's just jump forward. Okay. That's ongoing. I got friends in Canada, and they just laugh at us because who negotiated these treaties? Well, now, uh, now, granted, agriculture has done fairly well, but here's what's happened. Because of these treaties, the small Mexican corn grower has been put out of business. We can grow corn so cheap here, we export it down there, and the poor guy can't compete down there, and so he's out of business, and guess what? He's he's coming to our border to come come up here now. Yeah, I mean seriously, it's made the immigration problem worse. When in essence, it has also increased the inflationary costs of what happens in America. Well, absolutely. Of course, the Federal Reserve—that's a whole different deal. They just print money, you know, like monopoly money. Absolutely. And we pay interest on it. That's yeah. a whole other subject. Yeah. But our dollar is only worth three cents of what it was a hundred years ago. When you talk about the North American Free Trade Agreement (NAFTA), like you've uh, said and used those terminologies many times already, uh, basically the premise was to do what? Well, this was going to uh, open up the borders, and see, that's part of the whole, the whole agreement. It will open up the borders. Well, I guess it's done that pretty, yeah, pretty well. Really. But it's made great. Uh, a lot of these refugees that are coming from the south are coming on NAFTA trains that we more probably paid for. Mm -hmm. These are box cars. They're basically coming like steerage up here on trains to bring goods to the Mexican border on trains. And now they're, they're bringing human cargo along with, I'm sure, other stuff. And we're bringing in sugar now locally. Here's what's happened. Um, you know, and I thought this was going to happen a lot longer ago, but uh, our sugar industry is under a big attack because under NAFTA they're allowed now to bring in all of this cheap cane sugar, which is destroying our local sugar, our U.S. Uh, domestic sugar mm -hmm. industry. And so the whole deal is, if you think about it, Al Gore says, we don't want to produce anything here. We just import it. We'll make this country into a game preserve. Right. We've talked about that a, right. a lot of a yep. times. Mm -hmm. to, but let's fast forward real quick to these two different trade agreements, uh, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, and the Transatlantic Trade and Investment in Partnership. Um, first of all, free trade, uh, before we just would negotiate different things. We wanted, they have bananas down there, they got pineapples and different things. We, you know, they, we've got things they produce, want, and they've got things that we want. So we can basically have free trade. Well, when you get these agreements, Zeb, you have highly regulated trade. It's There's nothing free about it. And uh, the one that's coming up with Europe, the EU, and of course they're more bankrupt than we are, yeah. and countries over there that got in and want out. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's happening in there's 29 chapters in that agreement that's being negotiated. How many of those have to do with trade, do you suppose, out of the 29? I can't even imagine. Only five. Only five out okay. of 29. Out of 29. So oh, the other yes. 24 have to do with climate change, ah, Senegal ah, development, ah, there you go. homeland security, military, international courts, et cetera, et cetera. Have so, nothing to do. So what these agreements do is bring about not only economic but political merger. 
and you've heard me talk about regional governments. So this right. is the first we have the North America Free Trade Agreement. Then we have all the Pacific Rim countries, including Japan. By the way, Japan is they're having riots in the streets, probably as we speak, to prevent joining this Trans-Pacific Partnership because it's a redistribute the wealth kind of a comp, uh, situation to what it is. We're going to take our wealth and Japan's and probably give it to the third world countries along with all this political merger. But so you have these regional governments and then you create, you put the regional governments under a UN umbrella and you have world government. That's the ultimate goal. Well, you know, when you talk about UN and the United Nations, and there was a letter, uh, I think I've got it here on my desk someplace, recently in the Times News, and a uh, gentleman, oh, yeah. and I use the term loosely, uh, <laughs> was really chastising people like you and me that are against the United Nations and our involvement in the UN, and he thought it was the greatest thing, to use your terminology of a few moments ago, the UN was the greatest thing since sliced bread. Uh, why is it that uh, a lot of people can't see the facade, the false front building, the attitude of the UN is not for a sovereign nation of the United States, our republic, it's actually doing all it can to hurt us. Oh, absolutely. It's all about, we're getting world courts, we're getting Agenda 21. Oh, boy. And they, you know, you look at your power rates, and Zeph, yeah. I came here 43 years ago, and the valley, the price of gas was 23.9. Yeah cents yeah. a gallon. That was for regular leaded gas. Okay. So the UN has been since its inception after World War II. It was formed by communists and socialists. Alger Hiss was the first secretary general. That's right. And he was later convicted as a communist spy. Alger Hiss was in the wear cell of the Ag Department and they knew that the farmers and the ranchers were the hardest to subject to the, the communist Soviet rule in the Ukraine and so forth. They starved to death over there, six million of them. They come in and took slaughtered off all the animals, took all the grain out of there. They, Hitler was merciful by just gassing the, the Jews. They starved to death. And they just pulled all the food out of there. They had no way to get anywhere. And they literally, over six million of them starved to death. And so hold on, hold on, hold on. Sure. We got cut off again. This is the third time this morning. We're gone, huh? Wow. Ah, uh, back to us again. Third time of being cut off this morning. And audience, I apologize. I have no idea what's going on. Uh, first one was power related. We've had others, of course, in previous days, which were phone cutoffs, and we're still trying to figure out the reason why. We are on the air with Adrian Arp. He's in my studio, Dr. Adrian Arp, and we certainly appreciate his taking the time to drive out here and be on the program this morning. And we we're talking about trade agreements, talking about the United Nations and all the other things that need to be of concern to Americans and a free society. Uh, Adrian, I'll let you kind of regroup a little bit on the United Nations. Little by little, <clears throat> uh, it's surprising to me that most Americans can't see what's going on with the United Nations. They can't understand how divisive they are and how they want to see America basically fold their tent as a, like I mentioned a moment ago, independent nation independent nation and kind of basically go underneath their umbrella. Well, you have to, uh, I don't sure when we got cut off, but just let me reiterate, the fact is the United Nations was formed by socialists and communists. Alger Hiss was the first Secretary General. He was later convicted as a communist spy. He came into this country, he was in the wear cell of the Ag Department. The Ag Department, where they say, well, why did they infiltrate? It was the first communist cell in this country. And why would they come into the Ag Department. Well, the, the farmers and ranchers in the old Ukraine and just part of the Soviet Union was uh, we that were the hardest to subjugate to the Soviet rule. So they literally slaughtered off the animals, pulled all the grain and, right. and gains out, right. and and guess what? They starved to death over six million. So Hitler, by comparison, was merciful to just gas the people. But this was Stalin and and uh, the, the communist regimes. And so the United Nations history has been one of uh, talking about 
peace. Peace to a communist means absence of resistance to communism. And when I heard Putin the other day say, well, we got to have peace in the region, that means he wants everybody to accept communist rule. That's what he means. And they have their own uh, jargon, their own language, which we don't understand. Why, why do you think uh, in this current administration, which I cannot wait for them to leave office, but why are they giving the opinion or the atmosphere, I should say, and the personality that they're showing to the rest of the world and the public here in America of naivete, of being amateur, of being surprised. Oh, we heard it on the news. <laughs> this is the most ridiculous they administration exactly I've know. ever seen in my they life. They know exactly what they're doing. Absolutely. They know exactly what they're doing. And, you know, back to the trade agreements here, so I don't get off track too far, but this is what, what happened with NAFTA. They call it Trade Promotion Authority, TPA. The TPA needs to be stopped on these agreements. Folks, get hold of your congressmen, senators, and other states. Get on the emails and so forth because it's called fast track. That's the short term, fast mm -hmm. track. What, mm -hmm. what that means is when our State Department is through with these negotiations, which I'm sure are going to be political merger as well as economic merger with the EU and the Pacific Rim countries in these two different agreements. So it'll come back to Congress and they have to approve it. We're with fast track, if a president is given fast track, executive, you know, the State Department, that means Congress has to vote it up or down. No amendments. And that's what happened with NAFTA. So it was, it's an all or none deal. And we don't want, if they're going to... First of all, under the U.S. Constitution, Zeb, the State Department isn't supposed to be negotiating trade in the first place. Yeah. So they're taking them on an authority that they don't have in the Constitution. And so secondly, why would we want to give them authority then when it comes back, they're going to give a summary. And see, a lot of times these summaries are all glossed over. It makes, it makes you know, they paint it all over, it looks like, you know... It's just great stuff. But when you get right down to the summary of even bills like Obamacare and so forth, it, the summary looked pretty good. See, you know, this was going to be a big boon and so forth. But when you get down to the details, which, of course, is coming out in Obamacare and so forth, and some of these other things, the, the, the details, like Pelosi said, we have to pass it to find out what's in it. Well, we're finding out it's a, it's a lot of trash. Yeah, but that, that, that so. is really nothing new, only it's becoming more exasperating with this administration. Well, sure. The trouncing of our Constitution, the trouncing of our values here in this country, and the giving away of things that would benefit this country to help some other country become a stronger country than we are. It's called redistribute the world. There you go. It's all about socialism, and I, I want to mention something. Something, you know, go I see you got a. I've got a commercial. I got to get in here real quick. Calls are welcome. 436 2244 1866 927 4587. Don't forget Harris Plumbing NG for all your plumbing service needs. One call, that's all. 431 8633. Excellent service. I called here about three weeks ago. Bingo, they're right here to fix the problem. Very reliable, responsible, and professional. I am very impressed with Harris Plumbing NG. As I said, the job is done right efficiently and respectfully you call them today for your plumbing service needs harris plumbing ng 431-8633 uh, Dr. Adrian Arp on the phone. We've got, or on the phone, I should say, right here in the studio. Uh, we've got so many things to get into this morning, and I want to kind of leave the trade agreements alone, and I want to go into uh, a little bit more on Agenda 21. This problem is growing bigger and bigger every day. The EPA is absolutely acting like the 10-foot-tall gorilla in the room. Uh, I noticed that there is an ad right now on Fox News. Uh, that is tellepa.com and uh, what it is you can get online and absolutely tell the EPA what you think of them and uh, you know uh, tell them about how devastating <laughs> that kind of language well, on the air. you know really I, I'm saying to everybody be professional right but to uh, really tell the EPA how destructive and how senseless their policies are uh, by shutting down these power plants and their goal to literally kill the coal industry there is no replacement factor right now. There's no replacement. We'll just straight uh, conservation's not going to make this economy grow. No. And, and how are you going to replace uh, nationwide 
Over 40% of our power comes from coal. That's right. And, and the wind generators and the solar just is not going to get the job done. It, and see, Europe is finding that out, and they've really gone green, and they're they're turning away from green. That's right. And and so forth. But people have to realize, again, with you don't think global governance is affecting? There's, and I'll just mention this statement here. The North American Electric Real... Real Liability Corporation as an international self-governing organization with authority over our electric utility system. An example of global power shift. Real power because electricity is essential. And it goes back to some more of these agreements. And these agreements go back to... Uh, 1983, 1986, and of course uh, NAFTA, and these agreements with Mexico and Canada um, put us into an international type situation, and so it all boils down to, you know, we've got to get out of the UN, HR 75 folks, write it down, get hold of congressmen, we've got the United Nations is where all the power, but what you're saying about the uh, coal, I think the new regulations is another 435 pages or something, and you realize just right here, Idaho Power, just with Fort Bridger and Volney, we're going to spend $130 million of our dollars. They say, well, it won't raise rates. Are you kidding me? Tell uh, you me know, about let's it. talk about rates for a second. Sure. Now, let's just assume that the average homeowner is paying, let's just use a round figure of $150 a month. Let's just say that. Uh, with the diminishment of our power grid across the United States, but the increasing of the need for power, how in the world are people going to compete from the middle class and uh, perhaps your poorer folks that are on food stamps and welfare? How are they going to heat their homes? How are they going to compete for the power they need so to that, live and exist? It's all about making us a third world country, Zeb. That's, you know, that, and that's been the goal. Let's go back, clear back to the 1950s shortly after the the United Nations come into existence right after World War II. You know, uh, Norman Dodds was a special investigator for the uh, the Reese uh, Committee of Congress. He went to the Tax-Free Foundation and said, why are you supporting socialist, communist uh, ideologies and, and organizations? And he found out off the record that they were under directions to so alter life in the United States, meaning lower our standard of living, so we could merge into with the, the uh, third world glo um, un uh, Soviet Union. Why do, people, why do people laugh at this? Why do people scoff at this? Why do people look at you and and listen to this program and say, oh, those crackpots, those kooks, etc.? Why are they still not paying attention? Well, we like, can see things happening every day. Until you lose your job, until it hits you, your pocketbook. But look, at it's hitting our pocketbooks. I can guarantee you uh, power bills that... Uh, you know, are going to get astronomical. Um, look at gasoline now. I saw 385 for gas coming driving over here this morning. You know, and we're paying the high for some reason. We're paying the highest in the area. But the idea, and we've got all we've got all this fuel here, Zeb. But what's really driving up the cost is all the rules and regulations. The EPA. That's right. I've said it over That's and right. over. The EPA's got to go. That's right. And they are just. A bureaucracy totally out of control. You know, you might say that, that they're a bureaucracy totally out of control, but the point is, Adrian, we do not have any elected officials, any elected officials across the board, that are going to stand up and go nose to nose with the EPA. Why? Well, a real I, quick short answer on that. I got a break. short answer is I they just don't have enough gumption. I guess they just have the court courage to take on and do what they're supposed to do All under right. our constitution. We've got a caller with a question. Fast caller because I got a hard break in exactly a minute and a half. Go ahead, please. I'll make this short. Zeb. one thing I've noticed if Adrian can uh, comment on it is the limited liability corporations. And the effect they've had on on nations or on our nation and our ethics uh, in the last 40, 45 years, when that terminology came about, where we're not really held responsible to anything by that last terminology after a company or a farm. 
Okay, we'll have him answer that on the air real fast. Limited uh, liability sure. corporations. It's about what, terminology? Yeah, he was asking about and their control and influence in uh, our economy. Well, yeah, I mean, everything we do is, is coming down from our education system, our court system, and so forth. Everything's becoming international. We're all tied together, so we're supposed to be one big happy family. Well, we're going to have to redistribute our wealth at the expense of our standard of living. And uh, I would encourage people to go see the movie America oh, at the mall theater before we before uh, it's uh, it probably only be here a short period of time but it'll make you feel good about this country and refute all these uh, socialist lies about this country let's talk about that right after sure. the break the movie called America by our friend Dinesh D'Souza and I'll get right back to that real quick I want to remind everybody that's in the sugar beet growing business farmers listen introducing Preaxor from BASF the newest form of chemistry for sugar beets to fight disease and potentially increase yield and sugar content for your sugar beets. Preaxor contains headline and a new compound, Xenium, that also provides excellent control of powdery mildew. As I said, with the application of BASF's Preaxor 45 to 60 days prior to harvest, you have the potential of higher yields and more sugar content in your sugar beets. Contact your local ag chem supplier. For more information, call BASF's Ron Ellis at 431 -6 776 or Tim Perry at 844-0682. BASF's Preaxor for your better sugar beets. We'll take a break. Be back in three minutes. Don't go away. And now back to Zeb at the Ranch on AM 1230 KBAR. To reach Zeb, call 436-2244 or toll-free 1-866-927-4587. And now, here is Zeb Bell. Oh, welcome back. Last half hour, Zeb at the Ranch on a Wednesday morning. And with us, our guest in the studio, Dr. Adrian Arp. You know, Dr. Arp, you had a chance to go see the movie called America. And uh, it was produced by a friend of ours that's been on this program, and we're going to try to get him on next week, Dinesh D'Souza. Honestly, your appraisal of uh, not only the movie, but also the book. What were your thoughts? Well, I, I think that when you come away from the movie, he, he refutes a lot of the liberal socialist lies about this country that we've stolen everything in the world to make mm -hmm. our country great. Mm -hmm. He points out the fact that it's our free enterprise system, people's ability to dream, produce, and keep the fruits of their labor, as opposed to the regimes in history, the communist regimes, you can go back through history. It's rape, plunder, and pillage an area, and then move on and rape, plunder, and pillage another. And so he makes this distinction. He, he, he does a really good job with that. He also uh, once he ties in our current president to Saul Alinsky, who dedicated his rules for radicals to Lucifer, or meaning Satan, and he also ties in the fact that Hillary Clinton's uh, ties to Saul Alinsky, uh, and, and how she was a conservative and became what she is today by because of adopting Saul Alinsky and actually taking the one step further. So it it's it, it shows. In, in 90 minutes, people, if you haven't seen the movie, get out and see it. We almost didn't have it here, but fortunately, the work of people making a lot of phone calls, we were able to get it here. And I can guarantee you, you come away feeling it. People, you may not see every issue that you want addressed in this movie, but I think he takes a big picture and does a really good job with it. And, uh, and so I think that it's worthwhile doing. And, of course, the book is available also uh, at, at bookstores. Right. And uh, one of the bookstores, of course, pulled it for a while, is put it back on the shelves again. It was Costco. That, yeah, uh, Costco. They it out. And, but they, they put it back on the shelves. But I understand it's going out like hotcakes. So yeah. anyway, the, but it is available. The book is available. And it pretty much the movie was made from the book, not the other way around. You know, and the thing is, there were a lot of things that happened to to the producer of this film, oh. Dinesh D'Souza, prior to the release of the movie, uh, the Obama administration, I'm just going to point the finger right there, they did all they could to defame this man. Yeah, absolutely. He's been under fire, uh, be, you know, for pointing out uh, the obvious and, and pointing out his background and so forth. 
and the first movie, the 2016 movie that came out before the prior to the last election, and they did everything they could to make sure it didn't happen, tried to pull his books off the shelves and so forth. So he's he's uh, just a little background on him he came here in 1983 from that's right. india that's right he's seen abject poverty with we we don't even understand unless you've been to argentina and a lot of these other countries and in, in india and so forth so he came over here and and he's become a citizen and and he appreciates what we have he studied our history he brings out a lot about uh uh, Alex de Tocqueville, who came over here in about 1831. A lot of the movie he, he, he portrays him coming over here to find out what made, it, made America tick. Our founding fathers, two years after they passed the, the Constitution, the world was abuzz. What's happened in America yeah. without the taxes and regulations? And I challenge people to get out the Declaration of Independence and read it and, and find out that it's all of those things that we fought the Revolutionary War for independence is, is happening again, and we need to get back to the Constitution. Let me ask you this yes. in, in the movie, and then I want to jump over to Agenda 21, and we also have to hit Common Core. Right. Uh, but the movie, when you sat there and watched it for 90 minutes, did it just absolutely nail down the points he was trying to bring out in I, I the I think, he, yeah, and like I say, uh, people could be critical because it doesn't cover, you know, s specific subjects, but yeah. in 90 minutes, yeah. I think what he did cover he did an excellent job okay. and you might you know you could find fault because he didn't cover this point that, you know he didn't get into the, some of the specific things like we would be talking about even today mm -hmm. but he talks about the principles or the things where our country is being attacked by these liberals and he refutes that by using history true history I want to talk to Adrian about Agenda 21 and how it's progressing like almost sands through the hourglass. And we're going to be talking to him about that in just a moment. First of all, I want to remind everybody about Ritter Showcase 2611 Overland and Burley. Their big annual tent sale is going on. And for your convenience, guess what? With the warmer temperatures, the tents aren't outside. They're inside where the store is cool. Check out all the money you can save on Whirlpool and May tag in Amana Appliances. 12 months, same as cash on approved credit, and they've got a huge mattress sale going on. Oh my goodness, you don't want to miss all the fun, all the savings at Redder Showcase. 2611 Overland in Burley. You stop in for their big tent sale today. Adrian, you, and again, I'm giving you credit uh, for an excellent job over the last 15, 16, almost 20 years. You have uh, talked to me, you've talked to others about the looming Agenda 21 and what it's going to do to our power bills, what it's going to do to eliminate private property, what it's going to do to push us off public lands. Uh, where are we on the doomsday scale? And I don't mean to sound trite when I say that. I mean, seriously, from 1 to 10, 10 being the most serious, where are we on that scale right now as far as government control with Agenda 21? I'd say we're 6.5 to 7. Wow. It, because Everything, Agenda 21 controls everything and everybody on the planet. Yeah. That's what it's all about. And the global warming is the poster child or climate change or whatever climate chaos or whatever name they want to change it to. And it's a total hoax. And that's being used to perpetrate and bring all about all of this stuff on. Folks, it's totally, I'm a plant scientist and I can tell you it is an insult to our intelligence of anybody that knows anything about photosynthesis. If we don't have CO2 in the atmosphere, we don't have any food and we don't breathe. Okay, the optimum level for CO2 for plant growth is 1,500 parts per million. We're only at a fourth of that, 400. If we had double, we could increase food production and never spend another nickel on fertilizer. Right. But, you know, this is the kind of, but these facts are hidden from the people. Even Patrick Moore of Greenpeace. You know, he was one of the founders. Yeah. Okay. He realized that 
Greenpeace and all the environmental radicals, it had little to do with saving the planet. It had everything about controlling the people on the planet. Why aren't more scientists, why aren't more professors, why aren't more politicians, why aren't we speaking out and denouncing this incompetency that's trying to be pushed on us? Well, the whole thing is it's just such a money thing. There's so much money. Our tax money is being, you know, we've got a, a gal that's a working at the University of Idaho up there, and her full-time job is to use Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change statistics, which have been totally discredited, mm -hmm. and telling us that all these things, these climate catastrophes are going to happen. Well, I can tell you, it's all a bunch of lies. It's a pack of lies, the whole thing. If you can think that four parts, let's do it, four parts of carbon in the atmosphere out of 10,000 is going to ruin the planet if we go to 4.1. I mean, give me a break. It is so ludicrous. There's no common sense. There, There's no science behind it. They know there's no science behind but, it. But would you agree with me, they being the other side, the liberal left, the uh, climate change promoters, uh, it's for one word, and it is control. They, they know they can gain control of the masses, know they can gain governmental control, know they can gain control of agriculture, know they can gain control of uh, how the people transport themselves, etc. That's right. what it's all about. Absolutely. And so it's all coming from the UN again. We need to get out of the UN. We need to get rid of the EPA. Fire, the, fire those bureaucrats. I've lost two jobs to the EPA. Two good jobs. So I know how they operate. I mean, I've, I've been there and done that. I've already been in their mucky water. And I can tell you folks, the whole planet is under attack by the UN through through Agenda 21, and I just want to point out here, you, where do you get the information, people say? We're, you're not going to hear it on the mass media. You're going to hear it on Zeb's program and a few other places, but by and large, you're going to have to go to sources like Eagle Forum. You're going to have to go to the newamerican.com, which has new articles every day, jbs.org. I've been a member of the John Birch Society since 1968, and I can guarantee you, these you know, pro-constitutional, pro-American groups, and there's many of them, Freedom Works and so forth out there that are doing a good job. And I can tell you that if we don't take a stand pretty quick and get this thing under control, uh, our lives are going to totally change. Can you imagine life without an air conditioner right now in the Magic Valley uh, when it hits over 100 degrees? And I can tell you... Um, in the winter time, can you imagine not being able to, to have enough heat to keep your house above that's 50 right. degrees? That's right. Okay, because that's coming, folks. It's coming. It's, it's coming. coming. I agree with you. And I would, you know, so another part of that is the educational process. But I'm going to get into that yeah. in just a minute. We're going to talk about Common Core in just a moment. But first of all, we've got a weather forecast, and it's brought to everybody by Scarrow's Meats, 331 North Road, Jerome, where they're selling taste one bite at a time. You've got to try their marinated tri-tips absolutely delicious. So give them a call, 324-7657, your hometown meat cutter for over 20 years, Scarrow's Meats in Jerome. Right now here is Michael Rogers' weather. Hey everyone, Michael Rogers was there at the ranch. Another day of sunny and hot. In fact, another week of sunny and hot. It's going to be pretty dry in the Magic Valley. 93 for the high today, 60 for the overnight low. Enjoy the day, enjoy the weather. It's the only weather you got. Thank you, Michael. Short and sweet, very succinct weather forecast brought to everybody this hour by Scarrow's Meats. 331 North Road, Jerome, 324 7657. Selling taste one bite at a time. I want to talk a little bit about Common Core education. I have been criticized for being being critical of Common Core and the implementation of Common Core across the United States. I understand last night there was quite a meeting that was held in uh, movie theaters across the United States so people could learn more about Common Core. Give us a real quick synopsis on that, would you please? Right. I attended the, at the uh, Magic Valley Mall uh, theater there and there was, I'm guessing, 120 people, there might have been more there, uh, people that are concerned about our education, of our 
our youth. Obviously, that's the next generation that's uh, leaders. And unfortunately, uh, much of our education system that's presently out there teaches radical environmentalism, this, this global warming thing. It also teaches about how to be good world citizens. This is going to be Common Core puts that on steroids. And there's the meeting was sponsored by uh, Glenn Beck. It was over two hours long, and they had people like David Barton, Michelle Malkin, Kyle Olson, a right. gentleman that's going to be on our program tomorrow at 1030. And, and these are the kind, they had different groups and panels. It's hard to describe, but in a two-hour period, they really pointed out some of the things, that, the problems with Common Core and what people are doing to fight against it. And there have been several states, including Oklahoma, just recently, they had a state legislature from Oklahoma, and pointing out the, the problems with Common Core is it basically we're using our kids as guinea pigs and these tests and so forth uh, the math you, we've talked about the math is being totally archaic it's unbelievable how you get to the answers the kids are getting totally frustrated they had some children there that uh, are have been exposed to this and the the whole thing is it said well this was a bottom up deal no it was a top down bill gates put in over 4.35 billion dollars the u.s chamber of commerce pushing this thing it's all about commerce they want to be able to test these kids and uh, they're they're saying that these uh 84 percent of the people want state control and lower only 16 percent so there is no provision in the U.S. Constitution for the federal government to be involved in education, period. But this is a top-down program. The literature section of it is basically pornographic in many cases. They've taken away the standard works that we grew up with, the classical education. The math is bizarre. Uh, it, it's just totally, you can't believe how you get addition and subtraction and oh, yes, it I up. Can. Yes, it I is, can. It's totally bizarre. Let me, and, let me interrupt so, you there and sure. ask you that there have been some states already that have been very vocal against Common Core and have tried to opt out of anything to do with it, i.e. Oklahoma and also the state of Indiana. And there are others standing in line. W what did they do to basically shun their nose at Common Core? Well, their number one is just get the educate facts on the information out there and get uh -huh. get organized, and then approach the state legislators and so forth and point out what's going on and that this is not the governors getting together, this is a bottom down thing, it's a top down thing. Point out that the bottom line is is that this is going to be a dumbing down basically of our students and uh, it makes it so frustrating the students are dropping out. Okay, now so I'm going I'm so to hold your feet to the fire there sure. for a second, Adrian, and I'm not doing it to be uh, have any animosity against you. I'm just doing it to play devil's advocate. Right. When you say uh, that it's going to be a dumbing down, I mean, how can you prove that? What basics do you have to prove that statement? Well, how about if the, a number of the kids are dropping out of school? I mean, it's just, you know, that's a dumbing down process in itself. The number of kids that are getting so frustrated with the Thing. They used to have homework that would take them a half an hour. They had one kid, and they get on the Common Core thing. He says, "I'm I'm spending over two 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 hours." The parents can't help with the homework because it's a total different system in math. Mm -hmm. And the parents start reading the books, uh, the literature books, and they can't believe the this out and out pornographic stuff that are, the kids are being subjected to. And so it's a moral breakdown, uh, an educational breakdown. And it's all from a top-down situation. And so the, it's uh, one, Michelle Malkin said it was education malpractice. And education it, it, malpractice. malpractice. That's what she called it. And I thought that was really good. And it's about gathering information on students to, so that it becomes an economic type thing for all these big corporations. Do you look at Common Core education as a comparable problem like uh, Agenda 21 as control? Well, it's it's yeah, it's a control thing. It's yeah. it's propaganda. The tests are geared. Not to find out, this is what's interesting that I learned, that the tests aren't geared to find out what the students know. The tests are geared to find out what the students don't know. Can mm -hmm. you imagine that? Have you ever taken a test to find out what you didn't know? I, I mean, the, and so one of the things that they're doing in getting parents organized is to 
they boycott these what they call high stakes testing. Right. Because these tests, can you imagine a third grader taking a test that lasts an hour and a half or longer? Yeah, the attention spans not yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. Not there. And so it's just totally against the student. Well, and well, the parents are realizing on a national basis there were seven hundred just to give you a picture of how this is. Um there was, you can, I'm going to give you a website, www.commoncorefails.com. Mm -hmm. And they, that was the website they gave at the end that you can find out a summary of the information that was at that program. I'm sure your guest okay, tomorrow well, will talk about uh, yeah, it. Yeah, and Kyle Olson uh, with EAGnews.org was right. on our program yesterday for about 10 minutes. And he told me on the air that he had to leave for the taping of the Glenn Beck special that was yeah. going to be live. Last night aired along with Michelle Malkin and others. But um, why are educators, in your opinion, and schools in general across the United States, why aren't they asking more questions? Well, first of all, you can't believe, I mean, it's really not the fault of the educators at the, the administration and so forth. I've, I've got some educators that are good friends of mine, but they have been so, I, I would call it, indoctrinated that Common Core is the next best thing to slice bread. Mm -hmm. it, it's just incredible. I've seen a presentation and it sounds great, So, but they don't get into any of the details. When you get the the, the pudding, you know, proof of the pudding is in the details. When you get into the math thing, when you get into the pornographic literature that the kids are reading, these are the things that, that the, and, it, and it takes away the heritage of this country. Mm -hmm. They're ignoring the history that made this country good. So I would say, you know, get to the movie America, folks. Get to the movie. It, it probably won't last that long, but you can get Showtime's, uh, you know, 734 show and, and find out when it's on and uh, get over there to see it. It's worth the effort. Get involved, and we need to do that. One other thing I wanted to mention before, I know we're about out of time, and you knew that there was there's a lawsuit uh, against Mike Matthews in Twin Falls mm -hmm. and Cindy Sidaway, right. the National C Committee woman. Right. And it's the lawsuit's being uh, filed because of an illegal meeting that Mike Matthews, Cindy Sidaway are uh, calling to try to elect a new chairman, vice chairman, second vice chairman, treasurer, and secretary. And uh, the lawsuit is is that they illegally call this meeting. Only the chairman can call a meeting, and that's Barry Peterson. And there's been a the war, literally, within the Republican Party to get rid of Barry Peterson for whatever reason. I think he's a great person. I've met, I think he does a fine job. But the whole thing is, when the state convention adjourned, um, uh, Barry Peterson was still the chairman, and when they took the final vote, they said that officers would just stay the same for two years. Well, after that happened, it uh, then they wanted to call these special meetings, out, and that's why the lawsuit. I certainly hope that the GOP can get their act together as soon as possible, but it doesn't look very good. It's we'll be back with more to wrap things up in just a moment with Dr. Arp. Don't forget your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all the tires for all your driving needs. And along with your tires, of course, that means the best in alignment specials for better handling and tire mileage. Uh, of course, uh, the better in brake service, the very best in brake service. And, of course, they've got all the shocks and struts and uh, the batteries. I mean, whoa, they've got credit plans available that you can't afford to go anywhere else. They can help you right at any one of the seven locations of your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, John on Pole Line and Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland and Burley. All of these great folks are serving you with the best that can be possibly offered from your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. You stop in and see them today. Adrian, real quick, in regards to the uh, situation over in the Middle East and, of course, that encompasses is Israel and the uh, Gaza Strip, Syria, Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan. The world is in turmoil, and Obama goes out fundraising. What are your thoughts oh, quickly Dalton. on the president? It, it's, he's an absentee president. He's, he's absolutely, a, a, you know, a paper tiger, and Putin knows that. 
and Putin comes out, you know, and he can do just about what he wants to, as opposed to Ronald Reagan, the response he gave. Korean Airlines 007 shot down. He made some statements. I would like to say, though, in that regard, we had a speaker here for the John Birch Society come, and that airliner was not destroyed. It was forced down on Sackland Island. The headlines in the Times News were that, and they switched, and all of a sudden, everybody was dead. So Congressman McDonald was the president of the John Birch Society, and whether they wanted him or out of there or not, but it happened. And uh, those people, didn't. most of them didn't die. They were put into gulags. And you sound like you have very little faith and trust in this administration. Well, that's for sure. And I, folks, we need to keep, get our congressmen and senators back to obey the Constitution. They take an oath, and our state officials as well, to uphold the U.S. Constitution against enemies, foreign and domestic. I agree. Very well stated. Dr. Adrian Arp on our program this morning. Thank you, Adrian. And uh, we are going to be back tomorrow morning. It's Thursday tomorrow, and we've got a lot of people coming on the air, including men that we aforementioned, a uh, man that we aforementioned earlier, Kyle Olson with EAGnews.org, talking about that Glenn Beck special. We'll see you tomorrow at 8.06, the way things were, the way things ought to be. God bless. We'll see you tomorrow morning.